I'll give it up for the team So bunch of badasses if you know what I mean They're coming out of the sky, out of the sea And yeah, no on land, gonna take it to the enemy Rock and roll, boys Time to explode, boys Just make sure you get home, boys They got your back, the pride of the fleet The pipe swinging for men You're the UTT They don't do it for the money They do it for the country It's not about the fame They do it for the who They do it for the who They do it for the USA Booyah the big boys club, nobody does it quite the way a skill team does. Clean in, clean out, the boys are the best, and they'll be coming for your shells in the deck. So if you see a fall man coming with guns, you better reconsider whose side you're on. These boys are ghosts, team of the Reaper, and they'll be more than happy to deliver you back to your maker. They don't do it for the money, they do it for the country. It's not about the fame. They do it for the who, they do it for the who, they do it for the USA. Because the only easy day was yesterday. Come out, they don't do it for the money. Do it for the country It's not about the fame They do it for the who They do it for the who They do it for the USA They don't do it for the money They do it for the country It's not about the fame for the USA, they don't do it for the money, they do it for the country, it's not about the thing, they do it for the USA, they don't do it for the money, they do it for the country, it's not about the thing, they do it for the who, they do it for the who, they do it for the USA. Home. 
Welcome race fans to the Domino's TYJ Racing 
Hot Self Cup Series live here at the Brickyard, Indianapolis Motor Speedway on All Pro Broadcasting. My name is Robert McFarland. Shortly I'll be joined by Gabriel Wood and Ray Richer. Thanks for being here tonight. We appreciate your time. This is going to be a crown jewel race. It is 250 miles. It is the Cross Continent 250. So it'll be 100 laps. In a few minutes, we're going to give you all the details on how you can be the next lucky winner of the free, large, three-topping Domino's Pizza. We gave one away last night. We gave one away last week. We gave one away the week before that. So make sure you tune in and listen for the details on how you can be the winner of the next large, free, three-topping Domino's Pizza. We'll give that in just a minute. Right now, these drivers are getting ready to qualify. We've got a whole full field of very, very fast drivers. This Indianapolis Motor Speedway is a 2.5 mile oval with four distinct corners. It's a very flat track. Most of you people have seen the race last Sunday. NASCAR Monster Series put on an incredible race. Lots of cautions that went into the night. Uh, this race will not be going into the night. But you will see a lot of fast action, a lot of side-by-side -side passing. You're going to see some of the best drivers here doing their very best either to get their first win or their second or fourth win. We've got Tanner Talrico as fastest in practice so far with a 50.683. <clears throat> He's definitely looking to pull off the win tonight. As usual, we've also got some other very, very fast drivers in the field tonight. Dave Washington. He was second in practice with a 50.783. He's all, always a favorite. He has uh, won several races here in the uh, Domino's TYJ Racing Top Shelf Series. Like I said, brought to you live on Oprah Broadcasting. By the way, fans, make sure you click the subscribe button. That way you get all the notifications so that you can get the alerts when the races happen. You don't even have to worry about it. You get the alert, you tune in, you make your pick, I'll tell you how to do that in a few minutes. And then you can win the free large topping, three large top, three topping large Domino's uh, pizza from your local Domino store anywhere in the country. We've given away about 32, I think it's up to 33 of these pizzas so far this year. And we want to make sure you are one of the next winners to do that. Also, we do have the standings here. We've got a very tight standing right now. We've got just a few races left before the chase does start. Good evening, uh, race fans. This is Ray Richard. Uh, Robert, I finally got the things loading over here. I don't have anything up my screen yet, but just give me a couple minutes. I do have the standings up right now. Your top 10 is as follows. The 42 car of Tanner Tallarico with the lead in the points only by one point over David Washington in 98 machine who's in second place. Ryan A. Hill, a favorite every week in the 55. 474 is back only about 12 points behind second place. Curtis Young in the 19 machine will be your fourth place. Brandon Cruz Monsavis in the 54 machine in fifth. Jack Watts in the 66. Kyle Kamer in the 88. Gary Sexton in the 17. And ninth place will be Buzz Moore. But rounding out your top 10 in the 10 machine will be Nick Reynolds with 364 points. Tonight is definitely not going to be a disappointing race by any means. We're at a large track, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They usually have seating for about 400,000. I think every one of them seats are going to be used this evening. A 2.5 mile track. Obviously, we call it oval, but at this point in time, it is rounded off square. Well, rectangular, as I would call it. But regardless, it's going to be a fast and fun evening, guys. Thank you, Ray, for going to the standings. Like I said, we only have a few races left before the chase does start. Last night, we had a very exciting race in the uh, Dominus TYJ Racing truck series in that series we've got four races left before the chase Ray I'm not sure if you had that in front of you how many races are left here uh, in the top shelf cup car series before the chase starts it cannot be more than four five or six races so these guys who do not have a win they're gonna be trying everything they can do to get a win tonight here at Indy also Ray and fans this is a crown jewel event we have four of these every single year we might have six of them next year in 2018 crown jewel simply means the top three finishers get to earn a little bit of their fee paid back to them actually right now in front of me i will tell you robert we have eight races left after this evening next race the high banks of daytona and daytona beach florida 
That'll be on the 10th, actually, which should be, of course, I can't see my calendar right at the moment in time, but I believe that's next week. Uh, no, actually, it'll be two weeks from now. Sorry about that. I'm so used to taking and having every week with these guys. But obviously, that doesn't happen, and it is every other week because we have the Xfinity cars on Thursday nights every other week. Uh, right now on the track, watching Curtis Young, who has done a 15th place spot. It's kind of unusual for him. He's usually pretty fast at tracks like this. But I think you'll still be able to pull off a top 10 this evening. As we go up through the field right now, we'll get our top lineup and starting positions. Thank you so much, Curtis. Take your time and go through the, uh, the top qualifiers. And I will go over some of the rules with these drivers as we get ready to start. For what you guys out there are listening to right now, Robert's also an official of the league, so he gets to talk over the rules before everything begins. So as that's happening, let's go down your top lineup. With that starting, Colin Bowden in the 20 machine right now will start on your pole on the inside. Tanner Tallarico in the 42, who's your points leader, he'll start on the outside with a time of 50.518. 0-3 of Dylan C. Jones in the third place position. Ryan A. Hill in the fourth place. Your third row back in the fifth place on the inside, the 81 of Shane Paris. Favorite of everybody's 98 of David Washington, who does dominate pretty well most of the weeks. He'll start in the sixth place position on the outside of the third row. The 93 of Andrew W. Payne will start in the fourth row. Gary Sexton on the outside of him in the 17 machine. William Davis in the seven machine in ninth place. Josh Bonwell, hello mom, who watches every week. It will start in the 10th place position. Of course, watch him fight his way up to the field as we go along. Our 10th place guy right now in the point standings in the number 10 machine of Nick Reynolds will start in the 11th place. The 12 of William Roberts Jr. will start in the 12th place. 13th place will be the third of Michael uh, Mark Jackson, excuse me. The 14th position, William E. Moore. And rounding out 15th place is 97 of Jesse Abrams. Going down the rest of your starting lineup this evening, 16th place will be Curtis Young. Eric Stanford in the 24, Jason Carwell in the 18, Mitchell Reeves in the 02 machine will be in 19th place, Buzz Moore in the 20th position, 21st Brandon Cruz Monsavis in the 54 machine, Jack Watts in the 66, 23rd place will be Jeff T. Martin in the 014, the 41 of Robert McFarlane who is the official this evening, he'll be on the track himself, we'll be interviewing him during the race in the 24th place and rounding out your field this evening, the 25th place Starting position will be the 73 of Jeremy Crandall. Now, the 19th place on down to the 25th place didn't take any time. That isn't unusual by any means for this league because a lot of times the guys will start in back and, of course, expect wrecks. And, well, I hate to say it, but real-world racing with these cup cars, we kind of noticed that, obviously, this week. So that can happen, obviously, at any time. We'll be watching for those wrecks. Hopefully they don't happen anytime quick or anytime soon. We get a nice, clean race this weekend. It'll be very, very fun to watch. Of course, again, very exciting every week with these top shelf guys, and uh, they put on a great show. Thank you, Ray. Tell me who's looking fast other than the pole sitter. Well, once we get rolling here, Robert, we'll do that. Right now, obviously, their pace lap comes down to turn three. We'll get things turned here very, very shortly. Keep an eye on 20 machine of Tarantel Rio coming off turn four. Pace cars off at his, uh, his direction. They'll hit the loud pedal, and here we go. Green, green. Down the front chute. Green is out. They'll get a nice pace right off the start. Of course, six car lengths out in front as we go down to turn one. He'll take an arc the corner pretty good. The outside line will take double file. Try to slide into that low line because that seems to be the fastest way around this track. But Tanner Tellerico doesn't seem to like to have that lead go up too far as he's right on the bumper of Colin Bowden as they go down through turn two. Actually, excuse me, that's Dylan C. Jones in the 0-3 machine. Yes, sir, Ray. One thing I noticed earlier in practice, the uh, tire fall off at this track is tremendous. These, these cars lose at least... A second, half, a, well not a second, but a quarter second every lap, maybe a tenth of a second every lap for tire fall off. From what I understand, these drivers can go about 20 to 23 laps on a tank of fuel here in the Dominus TYJ Racing Series. So it's gonna be very interesting to see who can save their tires and do the strategy perfectly tonight to get a top 10, top five, or be in the money tonight for a top three finish. I'll give you kudos, Robert, launching that way behind the wheel and driving that fast at those speeds. And obviously, you guys just saw going down the front stretch, Colin Bowden slipped out of line a little bit. And if you take a look, when they get down the straights, they'll try to cut the draft because the draft is very important here, 
especially in a straight. Now you're watching that being demonstrated in the back stretch. As Dylan C. Jones goes to the outside, he'll get to the quarter panel of Bowden, but not be able to pull off the pass. He'll fall in behind, going into turn three to the low line as they take and go up through the stretch, which I'm not exactly sure what to call these ends, but uh, three to four, fourth place will take and go down, try to follow him through, and we'll probably see that same pattern right here shortly with Bowden trying to cut that draft. Goes on the inside, as I say it, he goes, makes it about four or five car lengths between them wide. He'll pull back up to the outside, getting set up for turn one. You read that they call that the short shoot? I could be wrong, but it sounds good to me. Hey man, it works here, I'll tell you that, and that's what they are on both ends with this track. Yes yeah, sir, I tell you what, the uh, tires are already falling off. I'm running here uh, near the back, but I'm getting a really good eye view of the guys in front of me. And fans, uh, we are going to give you all the details on how to win that large, free, free topping Domino's Pizza carryout only uh, from your local Domino's stores in, in just a minute. As we speak, we've got some serious heated battles up front. I'll let you cover that race. Absolutely. Colin Bowden, of course, on the point. He's been doing great holding off that 03 of Jones. But with their draft, they seem to be falling away from the field pretty good. Going back to the 55 of Hill, he has a challenge from behind with the 98 of David Washington, who actually got around him. Taking a look behind him, looks to be the 42 of Tanner Tell Rico, right on the bumper of the 55. Of course, they're doing their best to draft here, doing a little slingshot action as we go around this track. It only happens every now and then, but again, they try to cut the draft at the same time. Of course, slow down the other cars, but that also slows them down as well. Going back in the field a little bit. Just heard a whoa out of the 24, didn't exactly catch it, but I do see him coming off right by where the grass is. Behind him seems to be the 0-2 of Metro Reeves, apparently a little top altercation there. Both will take and pack it back up. They'll go down through the short shoot of three and four and bring it back down on the front stretch. Yes, yeah, so I tell you what, some of these drivers are great at Indy. Some of these drivers have not run many laps at all here at Indy. I definitely understand that uh, it's going to take some while, some time. We had a couple of uh, practice sessions, including happy hour earlier this afternoon here, Ray and fans, and a lot of these drivers, including myself, uh, were able to get down a rhythm. And Ray, you can uh, tell me what you think, but this is more of a rhythm track than anything. You've got to maintain your speed. You've got to maintain your momentum coming through these corners and the short shoot. you got to probably uh, enter the corners, back off early, however you, whatever you call that, to get the uh, great run down these extremely long back stretch and front stretch. See, a lot of the times what they'll do is they'll back down the corners as they call it. So in other words, when the tires are fresh, they can go in the corner pretty hard. They'll keep on the throttle just a little bit and keep the momentum underway. But obviously, once the tire wear wears off, you can't grip as hard. And what ends up happening is you go through the corner and you start to slide up. So you've got to back down the corner. In other words, lift a little bit early. And as you do, you can turn that machine a little bit harder. Now, I'd like to explain to you guys how to win the free pizza. What we've got every race, of course, as you watch every week, we give away a free pizza to one lucky watcher. And what they've got to do is guess the winner of this race by mid-race. And what happens is if you guess the winner once that voting is closed mid-race, you take and text your guest to 919-883-7497. I'll give you that number again. It should be at the bottom of your screen, 919-883-7497. So if you predict the winner midway through this race, you win yourself a large I think it's three topping Domino's Pizza at your local uh, Domino's Takeout store. Yes, sir, it is carry out only. And uh, tonight, uh, Ray and fans, you have to get your pick in before halfway. This is a 100 lap race. So by lap 50, you have to get your pick in. And I do recommend fans, do not pick three drivers. Take your time. You don't have to pick here on lap 10. You might want to wait and pick a little bit later. If you pick two, three different drivers, we cannot honor your picks. You have to pick one driver, take your time, pick the driver who you think will win this race before lap 50. If you pick two or three different drivers, then I'm not sure who you're picking. You can also pick in the live race chat. If you're watching on your device, say, I picked this driver to win. And like I said, you can wait as, as late as lap 49 or 50 to get your pick in. But the first fan to actually predict that winner by halfway, which is lap 50, does win that free large three topping pizza. Thank you, Ray. Absolutely, sir. Now look at midway back through the field, the 56 of Bonwell. He'll take and challenge that 10 of Nick Reynolds, excuse me, the 7 of William Davis. I didn't realize Reynolds got around Davis early. This is one thing that's happening right now, guys. What The tires obviously are wearing off. We're seven laps into this. Tire wear, of course, a little bit harsh here. 
And what they'll do is a lot of guys will get on the radio. To save their tires, they'll go high, let a guy underneath. And that seems to be what happened. And right now, uh, Bonwell, of course, challenging the uh, 7 right now. Right to the back bumper, but again, back off a little bit. I did look earlier. I seen the 11 of Buzz Moore get around the 24 of Sanford and the 0-2 of Mitchell Reeves. He's going down the back chute right now. He takes the uh, next challenge to be 97 of Jesse Abrams, who again is right along Bonwell. Uh, we do see a pass right now just ahead of him. The 56 of Bonwell did get to the low side of the 7. The 7 did let him go. What ended up happening with William, he'll take and save them tires as he also lets the 97 of Jesse Abrams go. What he'll do is get into a rhythm, hopefully be able to save them tires, and later on when these guys that are passing him take and wear him out, he'll be able to take that rhythm and go with it. Again, he lets another driver to the inside. That'll be the 0-2 of Mitchell Reeves. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ray. And I'm uh, making a bet here with the drivers in the field tonight. Any driver who finishes behind me in the official standings at the end of this race, they owe me $20. So I've already talked to the drivers. I'm in last place right now. And, uh, yep, looks like we're staying green so far. I don't see it yet. Looking back to the field, guys, see what I can find. No caution. That looks like the three of Martin Jackson spun out. He's down on the apron. No caution, we're staying green, and that's one driver who may owe me 20 bucks at the end of the race. That looks to be the case right there. I just had to see him. He did take and get towed back to the pits. They were able to clear the... Yeah, okay, the replay shows him taking spinning on his own here. Let me take a look, see if I can see it. Unfortunately, I can't catch it from my angle. Uh, Robert, I'm not sure if you saw the spin or not. Uh, yeah, I did. He, he was right. Yeah, sorry about that, right? He was right in front of me. It looks like he just got loose. I don't think he had any contact from anybody. At, at this time, the, uh, the these tires were seriously giving up, Ray. I'm telling you what, I'm definitely not a fast driver here at NE or at any of these tracks. I'm usually in the booth with you, but these tires were... 93 of Andrew Payne looks like he's spun on the inside. He'll be in the grass there. Trying to get her back up, he'll use that pit lane access road to get it back up to speed. He doesn't need a tow this time. This way, when he's down low on the low side, he's able to take and get back on track. No caution will be out. He'll be passed by the 73 of Jeremy Crandall, who now is in 22nd position. It'll bring the 93 of Payne back to the 23rd position, but keep him back on the track and under green. I'm being told by the officials, I think the uh, three of Mark Jackson, unfortunately, hit the wall so hard, it did do his motor in for the evening. Unfortunately, he may be done for this evening. That's actually an unfortunate story for him. Uh, hopefully, uh, he gets it fixed. He'll be back out. He's got the crew working on it as we speak. Back up. Yes. Go ahead, Robert. Yes, sir. I heard it was uh, uh, Andrew Payne who spun off of turn three earlier. He is back in 22nd position. I picked up one position so far. I'm looking to pick up another one or two. Before halfway, again, fans, get your picks in for the free large pizza. Before lap 50. A couple guys still saving them tires. Looking at the 17 of Gary Jackson. Or, excuse me, Gary Sexton. He'll take and uh, he's letting a couple guys go ahead of him. The 12 of William Roberts Jr., the uh, 55 of Ryan A. Hill. Uh, a couple guys, 81 of Paris there. He'll, he'll take and let them by again. Tires are starting to really fade here, even though it's 12 laps in. Again, it happens right, here. Caution's out, out guys. Caution's out. Yes, sir, Ray. Uh, take your time. Fans will get the replay pulled up in about three or four seconds, and we'll find out exactly what happened here. Looks like the 014 of Jeff Martin, maybe. Looking for it, guys. Give me a minute. Looks, it definitely looks like looks like that tire wears where his ugly head there, Robert. He came down the front chute, went to turn one, and the rear end just basically came out from underneath him. And as it happened, unfortunately, uh, he went to the inside wall, and it, it looks like it may have ended his night as well. He'll join back in the garage area with Mark Jackson right now. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, from the day uh, the commu team communication rate, it was the uh, 14 of Jeff K. Martin. It just got loose, like you said came all the way around and uh, unfortunately his day is done that's the second driver that's going to owe me 20 bucks tonight so hey, uh, this is a 
this is a really interesting question, Ray, real quick, as we're catching up to the back of the pack. What drivers are going to come in for tires? I'm thinking everybody in the lead lap with 13, 14 laps, or are you going to go 22, 25 on a tank of fuel? I'm, I'm betting everybody will be down pit road for at least two Goodyear Eagles, probably four, and two cans of Snoker Racing Fuel. I have, I have to agree with that 100%, Robert. I'm sure you're going to take that advantage, too. Again, Robert, our official this evening, uh, back in the 41 machine. He right now is in 23rd place, of course, Two guards with a spin out and unfortunate motor issues. And as I'm watching right now, the lead cars will come down pit lane and everybody else seems to follow. I'm looking back to see if anybody stays out. I don't see a one set of tires that are staying out in the speedway. We'll look up front right now to the 03 of Jones. He'll do the speed limit of 60 miles an hour, a little bit over, maybe by a mile an hour. Don't think they're going to catch it all that bad. He'll pass the uh, damage machine, unfortunately, of Jeff T. Martin, the 014. Well, we did have one guy stay out. It looks to be the 54 of Brandon Cruz Monsavis. We'll see if he's able to take and keep up. I think that might be a raw move, unfortunately, on his part. Right now, it's 03 of Jones, right side going up on the machine. Four Goodyear Eagles, two cans of Sunoco fuel, and he'll get back on the track. At the same time I'm saying that, it looked like, I think it was the 66, yes, of Jack Watts. Didn't seem to only take, let me see, I'm going to have to rewind that and see exactly what he got in the pit because he beat everybody out. Yeah, it looks like uh, Brandon Cruz, Monks of Ice, and the 54 stayed out. I stayed out just to see what he was going to do. I'm going to come down pit road this time to get my four Goodyear fresh, fresh Goodyear Eagles to stay out of the way here. Just uh, so everybody they, knows, the fifth, there, excuse me, the 66 had missed his pit. I think that he slid past it. He didn't even turn left into the box. Went right down pit lane. He'll actually take up what I'm going to think is going to be the third spot once we cycle back around but I think that's going to be a very large mistake on his part. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Ray, this has been uh, so far a pretty clean and green race. Had a couple of spin outs. The caution did come out. This is exactly the perfect time for these leaders to come down pit road and get their four fresh tires. It's going to mix up the uh, field as far as the restart goes. It does look like Dylan C. Jones came off pit road first. I, I could be corrected, Ray. You might have to correct me on that as far as the uh, standing order goes. And uh, I'm, I'm going to come... Right, Yes, sir, I'm going to come down pit road right now. And this is one of those long, extremely narrow pit roads where you've got to maintain the, the speed. It looks like the 54 of Brandon Cruz's Monsevix. No, he's staying out. A little bit of a fake by the 54 there. you got company right behind you there, Mr. Robert, the 66, who again missed his pit the first time around. Let's hope he hits it this time. You definitely need some good rubber here, that's for certain. We'll watch it. One here, obviously, talking to Robert here live. He'll pull into his pit box, almost a perfect square stop. Right side of the car will go up in the air. They'll take the tires off. All 10 lug nuts hit perfectly. They'll take put two tires back on. Jackman lets it down, runs to the opposite side. Second can of Snoka fuel in. Jackman up, 10 lug nuts off. Four fresh tires on. Down he goes. Yes, sir. This uh, crew, they're a little bit rusty. They haven't raced many races this year so far in the uh, 41, and that's just fine by me. But they did a great job there. I think they got all 20 lug nuts on the car, on the tires. I definitely got all the fuel I can stand. And I tell you what, I don't, I don't mind saying this up front. I'm going to be racing a fuel mileage strategy race to get my top 10 here. Uh, I think I can do it. I'm very confident in the team. I'm very confident in my uh, spotter up on the uh, on the spotting stand, Dick Trickle. We've also got his uh, son Cole Trickle as my crew chief tonight. So things are looking good, and I'm definitely looking forward to a top 10 finish, and fuel strategy is going to be a big part of it tonight, Ray and fans. Absolutely. When we cycle back around here, the 54 of Grant, Brandon Cruz actually, of course, out front. He faked twice. I'm amazed that he stayed out. But here's my theory on the way he's doing this. He's saving fuel right now. I'm assuming the car is being shut off again. I can't hear that from here in my point of view, but tires obviously he's going to have an issue with on the start i think he's going to get blown by but on the same note if he can keep up front and everybody else's tires wear out and he can keep his rhythm where he's in at least the top 10 someone that might run a talent to the point where the rear tires wear out and spin out and cause another caution which would bring him up again in the top 10 theoretically that's the only thing i can think of what is going through his head yeah thank you so much definitely sounds like uh brandon Brandon Cruz is definitely saving fuel right now. 
Yeah, I think that's a smart move at his point. Uh, pace car lights will be out this time at the stripe. We'll head down to turn one. Obviously, we'll pick up the green next time round. 2.5 miles is quite a ways to go under caution, especially at about 60 miles an hour. Well, actually, on the track, these guys are doing about 75, 80 at this point in time. Sure seems awful slow, especially when you're doing 194 or so during the race. Yes, sir, Ray. I tell you what, this is going to be super exciting. So far, the laps here have been exciting for me back here in the back. We had a flawless pit stop. And uh, right now, I'm even saving fuel myself. Not that it matters. But these fast guys, if I get lucky and they have some contact up front into the race, I can stretch one or two more laps than these guys can up front. You might want to pick me for the free pizza winner. Matter of fact, if uh, somebody picks me and I win the race, I will give you two free pizzas tonight from Domino's TYJ Racing. That's never, ever been done in one single race, and it probably will not happen tonight, but I'll put that on the table tonight because I'm in the field. You know, that's a heck of a gamble there, Robert. I'll tell you what. I mean, you've given away 30-something pizzas so far. Well worth putting your guess in, guys. Absolutely. You should take and do it. Give it the time to do it. I'll take your phone number up here again shortly. Again, fans, you are watching the Cross Continent 250 live on All Pro Broadcasting. I encourage all you fans to click the subscribe button. That way you get all the alerts for the free pizzas. We keep talking about this. You're thinking, no, these guys don't do that. There's no way in the world they give away free pizzas. Well, I'll tell you what. You go to Robert Graham McFarland on Facebook. Scroll down. You will see several different images of people who have won free pizzas. Pace car is off at the discretion of the 54. We'll see if he doesn't spin the tires again. A little less traction. He gets on the loud pedal. We're five, back to five. green. Down the front chute. The 0-3. Great start of Dylan C. Jones. Four fresh good ones. Right on the tail of the 54. 54 will take it low in the uh, turn one. And I'll tell you what, he's got a crowd of a lot of guys behind him. To the inside, the 20 of Colin Bone will take the shot to get down to the to second place spot to the inside of the 54. Plenty of speed. The 54 will let him have it. They'll go three wide down the back chute for only a moment. 54 falls back. Unfortunately, blocks the 0-3 of Dylan C. Jones, and he'll fall back about five positions as well. Bowden to the point. They'll go down to turn three. Very good line he's got going on. The 54 losing a couple more positions, about 10 spots back. He'll almost drop back to the 12th or so position. In line, we'll go down the short chute. Turn four, come around, back down to the front stretch. 20 he's got a great lead out in front. Looks to be about five car lengths back to the 42 of our points leader. We got a wreck over in turn four. Caution will be out. It looks like the 0 2 of Mitchell Reeves. We'll take a look at the 66 of Jack Watts. We'll get the replay up for you shortly. Yes, fans, give us about three seconds here. We'll get the replay pulled up. Definitely, definitely looks like it was on the front stretch. I My guess is somebody got loose. Go ahead, Ray. What did you see? We got, uh, it looks to be the, the zero 02 of Mitchell Reeves and 97 of Jesse Abrams. Abrams was just trying to avoid the 17 of Gary Sexton, and unfortunately, both tried to get the real estate away from each other. They were three wide for just a second. The zero 02, unfortunately, the uh, victim of bad circumstance there, and he got shot down to the inside wall. Now, looking behind them, I'm trying to see what happened to the 66 because i seen the aftermath of that. By the way, he did collect the 94 of Curtis Young down the front chute when that happened. And uh, we'll take a look at the 66 here in a second. Looks like the 66 kind of lost it to the inside. Unfortunately, hit the pit wall. That may or may not end his night. The front end damage is pretty extensive to that car, guys. Yeah, this time, fans, thanks for watching. We're going to take a quick or first commercial break. We'll be right back. You're watching... The Cross Continent 250 live on Offer Broadcasting. Fans, we'll be back in just a minute. Take your chance to get a, a new beverage, some popcorn, another milk for the kids. We'll see you in one minute.
your little storm knock out the power? Well, excuse me for not noticing. Hate to disappoint you, old man Winter. Better luck next time. If the power goes out, your Generac standby generator goes on, automatically. Down trees, flash floods, is that all you've got? Stand up to the threat of outages with Generac and never feel powerless. Welcome back, back race fans to the Domus TYJ Racing Top Shelf Cup Series, live known for broadcasting for the Cross Continent 250 here at the Brickyard. This is an exciting race rate. Uh, tell us what you're seeing up front as far as pit stop goes. Well, I'll tell you this, Robert. I'm seeing one guy sitting next to me in the booth. I'd like to welcome in Gabriel Wood to the announcing booth this evening. Hey guys, good to finally join you. Had a little bit of car trouble. Currently still covered in oil, but here to bring the race. Glad to have you in the booth tonight, bud. It's been a great race so far. Obviously 20 laps in, 100 lap event. We actually had Brandon Cruz stay out the last pit stops that they had through under caution. I see doubling up right now. I believe the pace car lights will be out. We'll have one to green this time. Uh, Brandon Cruz got shuffled back just a little bit. Obviously right now in 17th position, he started with no tires. I didn't catch to see if he took him pit this time. I'm going to assume that he did because of the fact of tire wear tonight's a little bit rough. Looking back right now, also at the 81 of Shane Parrish, I believe, let me see here. Ooh, Chase, I'm trying to see if he's got some rear end damage. And it looks like, yeah, he does. Left rear and the right rear seems to be a bit dented out. I'm not sure exactly where he got caught up in. But uh, we've had a few spins this evening, Gabe, before you got here. Welcome to the booth, bud. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah, again, sorry I'm late. Uh, let me get everything on, get everything ready, and I'll be ready to commentate the race. Yeah, Robert's in the car right now on the track. He is in, uh, let me see here, looks to be the 19th place. He put a Robert's bet on all the racing. drivers this evening, by the way, Gabe. He said if anybody takes and passes him, they owe him $20, and right now it looks to be about $100 rich. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Robert, good for you getting back in the car. We got a live mic on Robert anytime he likes to talk. Of course, he's got to hear us first over that loud motor. A couple guys in the back there. It uh, looks to be a couple laps down to be the, the uh, 21st position. Two laps down to 24 of Eric Stanford. Uh, not even certain if he's around looking for his car right now, I think. No, nope, he is off the track at the moment in time. So apparently he got caught in that last wreck there with the Curtis Young machine, the 94, unfortunately, and the, uh, the 66 of Jack Watts. Uh, we come down to short shoot, guys, in the turn four. Looking ahead right now, Tanner Tallarico looks to be on point. He'll take the outside right now for the restart. Pace car pulling off. He'll take and fire the loud pedal one its uh, time. And, oh, excuse me, Colin Bowman is the uh, leader. And he'll take and uh, get this underway. The 42 right behind him. 55 of Ryan Hill going to the outside, challenging him for a second spot right off the bat. As Gabe still gets his equipment on, we'll go back to the 81 of Shane Parrish. He's getting challenged on the outside of the 56 of Bonwell. Mom starts cheering him on. It looks like right now he's heading towards the top five, but a little wide off that corner. Still stuck Look to be in the sixth place. The 12 right now, William Roberts Jr. takes to the bottom side. He'll take and challenge him for that position, but uh, no, not able to get it. A lot of speed down that back stretch going into the short shoot. Outside of uh, the 12 right now, again, the 93 of Andrew W. Payne, who was involved with a spin earlier, still keeping up on pace, doing a great job with that car, keeping in the top 10. Right now, currently in the eighth position. Bonwell will go to the outside, help give these guys a little bit of room to get by. A little bit of tire saving, three wide down the front shoot will go. In the middle seems to be the 12 of William Roberts Jr., a little bit of cat and mouse going on right now. He'll head down to the first spot. It'll be the uh, 93 on the side of Bonwell. Bonwell will take the middle point and again ahead of him William Roberts Jr. will take it in the fifth position. Up to the 81 of Parrish and again a little bit more than a second up to the 55 of Hill in third place. Looks like the top three looks like they're going to have a bit of a breakaway here. Going down the back shoot they'll head down into turn three.
Short shoot, challenge to the inside. 42 of Calarico trying to get around that 20, but not able to do it this time. It takes the same line just for a little bit. Time going on the inside, but now down the front shoot. Doesn't seem like anybody's cutting the draft at this point, except for 555 of Hill. Hill's trying to take to get to the inside, gains a little bit. Back in line, he'll go. Looks like one car between each one of the top three, but don't count out that 81 of Parrish. He cut down that second lap, uh, excuse me, second place. Be yeah, second, one second between the third place and the fourth place down just a little bit more as they come down through turn two down the back chute. Three car breakaway down the back straightaway, closing in two laps away from the one quarter distance here. Good to be up in the booth here yet again for Domino's. Ray, it's been a good race so far from what I'm hearing. And it looks like Colin Bell trying to run away with it. But Tanner Talrico in that 42, your points leader, I do believe, coming into the night. He is not going to let him go down easy as they come down the front straight away. Single file throughout your top 10, top 15, everybody holding station. We get on the lap 25. Yeah, not sure where the Nitrous kicked in on Bowden's machine, but, man, he just pulled away from there about four car lengths when he went through the last short shoot. They'll go down to turn one. Bowden's got it by about a half a second and still pulling away a little bit by bit. A lot of rhythm around here will actually get this farther and farther away. Six car lengths now separates first and second. Back to the 42 of our points leader for Tanner Tallarico. One point, point lead for Tanner Tallarico over David Washington coming into tonight. Speaking of that number 98, he's looking for a move there on Gary Sexton. Doesn't make the move, ends up pulling inside. It's Gary and Gary Sexton in that 17 battling with the number 98 of David Washington. Washington already with laps under his belt, 80 laps on Monday. Here in the RSR Full Throttle Cup Series, as well as the driver right behind him, Dylan Jones. That number zero three. A couple of drivers were in that field, and it is looking good. Tanner Talrico also made a start, so it's paying off. All three of the drivers who did race on Monday, who in a different lead. I mean, these guys, to be fast in this series, especially at this racetrack, you've got to keep practicing. Practice, practice, practice. It's four dis different distinct corners. These drivers are having a hit. Colin Bowden at the moment, he's the master of them all. I like to say a man on the move every week. Right now I'm looking behind the little three of Jones and right behind the 98 of Washington. The 11 of Buzzmore did not take a time for qualifying but started in the 20th position. Obviously fighting for a top 10 this evening at the very minimal. He'll be in the 11th position following these four guys ahead of him who seem to be battling each other. And I'll tell you what, if they keep battling each other, Gabe, he's going to be able to pick up pretty easy because of the fact that they're not going to have the speed of their close to Right ahead of them, David Washington is now trying to make a move on Gary Sexton, number 98 machine to the inside on the front straightaway here on lap 27. Can he get that pass completed? Yes, he will. That Ford Fusion passes the Toyota Camry there in turn number one down the short chute in turn number two. And now he's going to set his sights on Josh Bonwell. And can it be two cars in one lap? The 56 runs wide there in turn number two. He's going to get passed by three cars as they go down the back straightaway. Dylan Jones now, the final driver to try and make a pass. Still not a bad move by the 56. I'll tell you right now, earlier, Gabe, when uh, you were still kind of having a little car trouble there, he did that same move. These tires, within a matter of seven, eight laps, are basically they just start getting wicked loose. And uh, we had two spins because of that. So Bonwell isn't doing a bad move by doing that. He's saving his tires, taking his time, biting his corners. And again, behind him, the 11 of Buzz. Moore. Buzz Moore moving up to the field. I think he got past a couple other guys. It looks like he'll move up a couple positions and he'll join, uh, nope, I'm sorry, he'll still be in 11th place position. I didn't realize that Bob went back, back to the 10th. But it may just be a matter of time there for the 11 of Buzz Moore, that Budweiser machine making his way to the back bumper of the 56 of Josh Bonwell, new sponsor for that driver. They got down the back straightaway. Very sharp 56. Of course, Mom again cheering him on this evening. Nice, bright yellow car. Trying to see the sponsor from here. Just got to get a little closer with the camera. Looks to be the Armor All Wheel Protected 56 Ford Fusion. Very nice paint scheme. Looks pretty nice in that sunshine. Hot Wheels right in the back deck lid. He's got some nice sponsors going for him this evening. Yes, sir, guys, real quick. I had a couple of technical difficulties. I had both of my a and B ignition system blow out on me. I'm on pit road, so I'm back in the booth now helping you guys out, but I will let you guys take over. Now, wait a minute, Robert. These guys have passed you already. Do they still owe you $20? And if they get back on track and pass you again, will you be able to reframe that? 
There's no getting back on the track for the uh, 41 machine, unfortunately. I had a lot of fun there for a few laps. Uh, you guys call the race, and we'll figure it out in the race more than likely. Ten Nobody will owe me any money. 10 force right here. Yeah. What it comes down to, though, guys, single file all the way through. Looks like a little bit of passing right by a mid pack in the front. It looks like uh, 93 of uh, Andrew W. Payne gets around the 12 of William Roberts Jr. They'll go down the front shed. He, he will cut that draft like we talked about before. They take and go down the low side, cut the draft, and slows down the car behind him, makes him kind of equal, and then gets back up, cut, uh, gets back into the draft again. Gap holding station up front, six and a half tenths of a second. Colin Bowden there as he goes to turn number two. There's a little bit of a gap coming down there from Tanner Tal Rico, your pole sitter who is closing in maybe just a little bit. Going to go back through the field. Looks like William Davis in the number seven and Jesse Abraham in the number 97. Looks like he's going to make a move here or at least try to as they go into turn number three. He's going to show his nose, but is the seven going to give it to him? He is. So a little bit of give and take there from the seven of William Davis as they go into turn number three. Now Abraham's going to set a sight on William E. Moore in the number 12. Brandon Cruz a little farther back than these guys. Again, earlier he didn't pit, started on the point, fell back to 12th, unfortunately in the 16th place position right now. He was 17th for quite a bit, so he's just kind of biding his time. There's still a long race to go. We're only on lap 31. Guys, speaking of which, get in your pizza, uh, pizza guesses by lap 50 at this point in time. I'll give you the phone number one more time. I'm going to text Mr. Robert Graham McFarlane, who can now look at his phone because, unfortunately, he's in the pits. Text your guests at lap 50 to 919-883-7497. If you guess again, your leader was going to win the race on lap 100, but you guess it at lap 50, you have a chance at a large three-topping Domino's pizza delivered to your house. Excuse me, is that carry out only, Robert, if you don't mind me asking? I do believe it is carry out only, but you'd have to check with Robert. Yeah, I think Robert's still having a few different holes uh, there. Gap coming down, or at least it did that last time by, but now it's a seven tenths of a second there for Tanner Talrico. Still single file throughout the rest of your field. Looks like actually David Washington trying to make a move on William Ruffage Jr., the number 12, the Monster Energy Machine, whose color used to be carried by the number 98 machine, but now that number 98 sporting the Chef Andy's Lobster Rolls sponsor and uh, of his crew chief and spotter, Andy, Ke uh, Andy Kessler, who also runs in the truck series. Now going to move on the inside of the 12, going into turn number three. You can get that done, move done now, and looks like his teammate's going to follow suit. This is a little bit of a nice teamwork there from the 98 and the 03 there, Ray. Yeah, we're getting on in tire wear right now, and a lot of guys are going to kind of give a lot more than I think they're going to take. So when they do give, obviously the advantage goes to the guys who's going to take advantage of that. By the way, up front, the 20 of Colin Bowden right now, it's uh, increasing that lead ever so slightly. Last lap beforehand, 0.689. Last lap before that, 0 0.710. Right now at the strike, 0.747. So every time, every lap, about three-tenths of a second he's gaining, it, it's still a lead, man. He can still pull this off, doing a great job staying up front. So again, our points leader, the 42 of Tanner Tallarico in second place. I tell you what, Ray, look back here at Dylan Jones, back at the 0 3 that 12 of William Roberts Jr., he held him off there for that last lap and was able to hold him off there in that seventh position. But now here comes Jones to the inside that 0-3, making the move for that seventh spot. He'll follow through his teammate there, finally get on, see if he can get up to the tail, and they'll start causing some draft. And, and with those two cars, if they're alone in the draft and everybody else tries to cut it, they'll take and gain up some speed and head towards the front. And they've been pretty good together the past few weeks, Gabe. Gap coming down. Half a second, Tanner Talrico in the number 42 machine to the back bumper of Colin Bowden there, that DBR racing number 20. Can he get it done here? We're closing in on halfway, about 15 laps from it. As right, we got a spin on the back straightaway, Dylan Jones around. Taking a look at this, this is a game changer a little bit. It looks like he come up the track and unfortunately caught the team member of the 98. Oh, there's a little bit more to this, Ray. Going to get the replay up for you. It looks like he pushed high there in turn number two. And as he slowed down trying to stay off the 98 more, William Roberts just punted him there and major front end damage to the number 12. Yeah, I'm looking right now. I agree with you 110%. It looks like William Roberts Jr., unfortunately, will have a shortened night. 
If not, at least he'll take and try to get it uh, get it repaired. The front end damage isn't completely extensive, but on the same note, I think they can repair it, get him back out. His aerodynamics, though, are going to be shot. Well, Ray, if we're in here under costume, I think I'm, we're not going to take a commercial break, but I have to ask a favor from you. Could you take the broadcast for about 10 minutes so I can take a shower? Really? Yeah, I don't announce that, really. I'll tell you. <laughs> you know what, but I understand. Car troubles are car troubles. We can definitely take care of it. Robert, are you around my team? Oh, actually, he's not in the room right now this time. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do this solo as best as I possibly can for a little while, guys. Again, lap 35, we're going to take go down into uh, pit lane here shortly. We'll keep an eye on who does what. I think everybody's going to take four tires, uh, get out as quick as they possibly can. Again, 15 laps for you to get your guests in for that free pizza. Give you the number one more time. Doesn't have to be at the bottom of the screen. Just make this quick. 919-883-7497. Again, 919-883-7497. Guess your, uh, guess your winner of this race at lap 50. A free Domino Street Topping Pizza. Carry out only will be yours. Guys looking at each other's cars right now, listening to the radio. They're kind of helping each other out. When they're inside the cars, everybody has communications with every car on the track. So sometimes it can get a little awkward, of course, in case somebody touches somebody else or somebody spins. But what they'll also do is cooperate, especially in this league. They're very good about that, communications. If somebody's got a ding on their back quarter panel or their front end a little screwed up or something like that, they'll pull alongside them under caution. They'll tell the other guy, okay, well, I see this or this or this. Now, we haven't seen too many guys kind of trick around with this. In other words, okay, I could turn around and tell a guy that his dender, you know, fender's dented, and he'll try to take it into a corner a little bit different. But uh, never have I lied to anybody, and neither has anybody else from what I've seen. Again, right side's going up on about every car I see down in pit lane. Left side's as well. Four tires are definitely the call. They're going to take and wear out pretty quick here, like we said before. About seven, eight laps, it seems like it gets down to that point. Seems like Shane Parrish will beat out the 42 of Karen Tel Rico. I think that's a move on his part so he can start on the inside line. And if that's the case, that is a very smart move on his part. I tell you what, any advantage you can get on pit road here at Indy to beat these leaders, the guys that are in the top of the points, you better take it when you can get it. Yeah, no question about that, Robert, especially with these heavy cars. you got to realize these are 3,600-pound machines. I do realize it's a sim, but they simmed everything that they possibly could. Tire wear, how they steer, how they feel, and even the weight of these things. When you go down the corner, if you take it on the throttle a little too quick and your tires are wear just that much, you will break them loose. And obviously, we've seen that as an example twice earlier tonight. Robert, so, just so you know, uh, Gabe unfortunately stepped out of the booth just for a minute. He uh, had to... Um, had to, uh, he actually announced it on air, he had to take a shower, which again, car trouble does that to you, which we understand, and uh, he'll be back in about, uh, oh, five, ten minutes or so. Hey, no problem, I am back, at least here in the broadcast booth with you, Ray, and watching the race on uh, one of my many monitors. I'm trying to log back in to actually get back in the car. What I heard from my uh, head mechanic is, they put two batteries back in the 41 machine, they checked all of the connections. We had a loose ground on one of the connections. So I'm hoping to be back on the track here in a lap or two. And uh, I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to be many laps down, but I'm definitely here to help you out here in the broadcast booth until then. Appreciate and you. after then. We appreciate the uh, mic in your car this evening, too. I'll tell you what, it gives a little bit of a perspective of what's going on in the track. By the way, a uh, little bit of side note, Robert. Gabe Wood just sent me a picture of his arm, and let me tell you, I don't think there's an ounce of uh, skin left on it. It looks like it's all grease. So, yeah, I, can, I can't blame him for stepping aside just for a minute. Again, car trouble does kind of get to you. You know, it does happen. Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, everybody has car trouble from now, every now and again. And uh, when that happens, you got to take care of it. Amen. Especially if you got to go. Yes, sir. Especially if you got to go to your day job the next day. You name it, you got to take care of it right now. Absolutely, bud. Absolutely. Big hygiene guy right now. That's all right. You know what, though, we can bust his chops because even though he can hear us, yeah. <laughs> but it's all good, man. He's a good guy. Well, the good news is right now, when Gabe comes back, all you fans are not only going to have the chance to pick your winner for the uh, free Domino's topping, three-topping pizza, but you're going to actually get to smell the cleanest man in the room, Gabriel Wood. you gotta, you got to lean way close to your screen, whether you're watching on your phone, 
your tablet or your computer or your your big 72 inch or 80 inch uh, widescreen TV in the man room or downstairs in your family room which is what I'm hoping you're doing with all your family uh, you got to make sure you lean up close and no smell real clean in a few minutes when Gabe comes back because you're going to smell some dove or head and shoulders <laughs> I'm not sure what he's using tonight but I was thinking he's going to smell like plastic or glass <laughs> Exactly. Uh, we like to have a little fun here, guys. I mean, I know it's kind of uh, odd, but that's all right. We'll get Gabe back in here when he gets to that point. Uh, looks like right now, pace car lights are off. Cars will be doubling up down the front. Shoot. Right now, our leader, Colin Bowden, on the point. Shane Parrish gets out in second. Of course, around the 42 of Terra Tel Rico. Ryan A. Hill in the fourth spot. Andrew W. Payne in the fifth spot. Rounding out your top ten, David Washington, Buzzmore, Gary Sexton, Josh Bonwell. Again, Mom, keep rooting. William E. Moore rounds out your top ten guys. Yes, sir. Uh, Ray, I'm going to have to let you take this restart. I am still loading back in. I've got my helmet back on. It's going to take me a second or two. Fans, give me three minutes to get my microphone hooked up in my helmet. Uh, we got to get all these things. we got the AC system going in my helmet, so I've got cool helmet. We've got to make sure all the tire pressures are back up. i got four brand new Goodyear Eagles. I'm going to be many, many laps down, but I'm going to try to make the best of it. But I'll be right back in about two minutes. Yeah, so, Ray, like, you take the restart. Absolutely, bud. Looks like the 41 of uh, Mr. Robert McFarlane will be 14 laps down scored at this point in time. But he still has to contend with the lap down car of 94 of Curtis Young and the 12 of Rob Williams, William Roberts Jr., who right now is taking some repairs in his pit. Uh, looks to be the only car left on the lead lap. Excuse me, will be the 17th place of Brandon Cruz Monsavis, who comes back out on the track right now after pitting one more time. Not a bad move because right now he just topped off fuel. If he can catch the field before they get up to full speed, which they're down to short shoot heading into four, he should be able to take and have that one extra lap of fuel in the car. It will actually help him in the long run, but tires are going to be a different story. We'll take and go down to turn four. Watching the pace car right now. Re-rack them back up. Pace car will take its lead off the track. At Colin Bowden's discretion, of course, he'll hit the loud pedal, and off we go. Go green, back green in the flag, air. Green flag. Behind him, a little shuffle side by side. Looks to be the 81 of Paris. Tal Rico on the low side, who where he looks like he wanted to be. He'll go down to one, take over the second spot from Parrish. Not a bad move on pit lane. Back a little bit in the field. Looks like the 98 of Washington a little bit wide. We'll get around the 11 of Buzz Moore. Again, Buzz Moore starting in the 20th position right now, up in sixth place spot. The 81 of Paris kind of left the 93 by. Andrew W. Payne will pick up the spot at the same time. The 98 will follow suit. He'll be down the back stretch. Looks to be in the sixth position. Buzz Moore looking to take away that spot as well. Not a bad spot because of the 81. Going down the back chute, he'll lift a little bit, kind of save a little bit of tires, get into a rhythm. He'll have Gary Sexton on his bumper. Behind him looks to be a new player in the game. I think that's the, I'm looking to see the car number 58 of William E. Moore, who is now in the top 10 off the first lap. Back up front, Colin Bowden will take a half a second lead on the leaders. Tanner Tellerico back to the second place spot, and one more second back from the leader, Ryan A. Hill, who has company behind him, and on the move, the 98 of Watson to the inside right now of the 93 of Payne. Payne let, not letting them go too easily. They'll be at the corner panel, but back to his bumper, he'll go down the chute. A little bit of push from behind the number eight, uh, excuse me, 11 of Buzz Moore. They'll go down to turn three. Single file all the way back. It looks to be at least a 10th, maybe even 11 spot. Up front, Colin Bowden pulling away as he did before. Half a second on the field last time they crossed the strike. Back to the third place this is for a second of Ryan A. Hill. It looks like he almost went to the bottom to try to get, cut the draft there, but didn't take the chance. He'll arc the corner very nicely going into one, holding off the 93 of Payne, who right now is in the fourth position. Fought up through from a seventh place start. Not a bad night so far for a top 10. Buzz Moore right behind the 98 of Washington uh, actually will fall back a little bit compared to what he was last lap. He was right on the tail of 98. 98 right now in the fifth spot, doing a great job keeping up with the leader. Thank you, Ray. What has he seen in the middle of the pack? Yes, sir, Robert, get those belts on, get back in, and we'll hear from you here very shortly. 
Right now, again, a half a second back to the second place spot. Parentel Rico, our points leader, as I said earlier. We'll look back in the field, see if there's any challenges going on. Right now, we'll have to go back to the 18 of Jason Cardwell in the 12th place spot. He had a challenge a little earlier, but uh, it seems to pan out right now. Uh, single file will go. Unfortunately, I'm having issues with my uh, microphone. As always, NASCAR has got to have full communication with the drivers. So give me a couple more minutes there, Ray. Thank you. Not a problem. So we understand technical issues do happen. Going back to the fifth place spot of the 98 of Washington, it looks like there's a little bit of shuffling behind him. Uh, Buzz Moore seemed to fall back just a little bit. Sorry about that. I got a little bit... Uh, there out of the one camera, but uh, yeah, he's falling back at least 10 spots right now behind the 98 of Washington. Ahead of him, Andrew Payne holding off that spot. There was a challenge earlier from the 98, but again, he looks again to the inside. Not enough to take to go there. It seems like he's taking a little bit shorter around that corner going into one. Hill doing a fantastic job in the 55 machine up in third place, but he's still under a second from the leader. Now, as I say that, Terrence Rico cuts that lead a little bit by two tenths. He'll be .316 right now, last time at the strike behind the leader going down the back chute. Now Tal Rico trying to challenge up that 20 of Bowden. He'll take and go down to turn four. Arkin a little bit lower than Bowden does, but Bowden comes out on top. Still about four positions taken between the two. Make that about six now. He takes and comes off the corner pretty good, and Bowden will take your lead still. Lap 44 is what we're on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you've got six laps left to get your guests in for your free pizza. And I'll give you the phone number one more time. you got to text it to 919-883-7494. Again, 919-883-7494. Guess your winner of this race in the next six laps as you text it to that number. And you will win yourself a free, large, three-topping pizza from your local Domino's facility. Yes, sir. Thank you, Ray, so much. The uh, advantage of being one of the top-tier teams, like the uh, Napa, I'm thinking of Taylor Talrico, is you get all your equipment set up pre-race, during the race, and post-race. Unfortunately, in a low-level funded team, like the 41 tonight, we got like $6.29 invested. <laughs> We're still having technical issues getting back on the track after what would appear to be a normal battery change. So, uh, you know, they found the short. They're still working on the other stuff, getting them back in the car. Uh, we'll get there, Robert. We'll get there. Right now, going back to the 10th place position right now of the 97 of Abrams, the 03 of Dylan C. Jones looking to get to the inside. A little bit of damage to Jones' his car from an earlier incident. He'll get to the inside and take away the position going to the inside. Actually, not without a challenge. The 97 of Abrams fight back. He'll get up towards the wall. A little bit loose. Enough to allow the old three to get around him right now. He'll take that position. The top 10 still is going to be with the 97. Yes, sir, I am back in the booth. I finally threw my helmet on the ground. I stamped on it. I could not break the helmet, unfortunately, because it is strong enough to protect my uh, ugly or beautiful skull. But I'm in the booth with you tonight, and right now it does look like up front we've got Colin Bout who is leading this race. I think he's led a lot of the laps so far tonight. I'm a little bit late to the show, Tanner Talrico. He's in that beautiful, looks like to me that uh, Napa Auto Parts Drill Spill 42 Chevy SS. He is definitely running up front in the second position. Looks like Tanner started actually in second position, so he has not lost any position so far at all. Rene Hill on that number 55 is up in third. He's gained one position. And we got basically the top guys up front, except for we have Buzz Moore started 20th. He's up to sixth. So this is going to be an incredible battle at the end of the race. I think these guys, uh, Ray, have gotten used to the track conditions and exactly how things are going to happen with the tires falling off. And uh, they are ready to race the second half of this race for the win. And one more time, fans, you do have two more laps to get your uh, picks in. For the free Domino's Pizza text 919-883-7497. Or if you're watching 
on your device you can always comment i choose this driver to win the race we got many people commenting so far we'll have the update before the race is over after we have interviews with the uh, top three finishers one thing i'll talk and point out here uh, mr robert is david washington actually took the move on hill going down the back chute he got him going into turn three little hand out the window a little thank you and he goes uh, thank you for the 55 and the uh, the sarcastic sure from the 55 came over the radio, and I think that was not a given position. 98 of Washington actually earned that position. He'll take up the third place spot right now, back up to the second place of Tanner Tallarico, who is actually about one and a half seconds ahead of David Washington. Washington's got a lot on his plate he's got to catch up with. Hopefully, uh, for his sake, if the caution come out, he'll be able to take and challenge him for the lead. But again, we have to get tires. Bowden on the point, doing a fantastic job. He actually gained his lead a little bit back from Tanner Tallarico. Almost 10 car lengths separates the two right now. And almost also back uh, to the, look to me, the 93 of Andrew W. Payne. They were catching uh, the 98 of uh, Washington and the 55 of Hill for quite a while. They made it about five deep in a line. And a uh, whole long buzz for in the 11 with them. But uh, that seems to be shuffling up now. The 81 of Paris goes to the inside of the 93, trying to take over that top five spot, which it looks like he'll do going down to turn one. He actually passed uh, Buzz Moore earlier on the inside, right down the straight. He's got this tire wear thing down pretty good. Yes, sir. Actually, he's got some serious competition. Andrew Payne is battling back on the outside in that Tallarico Signs and Designs number 93 Chevy SS. I tell you what, it looks like the 81 of, of uh, Shane Parrish in that Surf Pro. Uh, Toyota Tundra. He's got help from behind right now from the Buzz Moore, Chevy SS, Budweiser, Kentucky Fried Chicken, number 11. They both look like they might get around the 93 of Andrew W. Payne, although Andrew Payne is battling back on the outside now. But Shane Parrish definitely completed the pass. This is where in the race, um, Ray, these tires do wear out, and it's going to be the, the driver who has the most skill driving a loose car at high speeds is going to win this race. Obviously, I was not one of them. Yeah, 10-4 there. I'll tell you, Andrew W. Payne does not want to give up that position easily, and he was able to get around the front of the 11 of Buzz Morris. Buzz goes down to the inside. He'll try to take it, and it looks like he's going to get it too. No, Andrew Payne trying to the outside. No, nope, this time he slips up a little bit to the third group. Door to door, they'll go down the back, shooting the 0-3, makes it three wide, way down to the grass. He'll take and challenge him for that position at the top five with Buzz Moore in the middle. They'll take three wide down to the corner. Who's going to prevail here? Looks to be the 93 of Andrew W. Payne, by the way. Oh, Jones gets, gets, gets loose. Number three gets loose to the inside. He'll go down to the inside of the grass. Dylan C. Jones will gather it back up. He'll use that pit road access road to get back on track. By the way, guys, I smell Dove in the booth right now. Welcome back, Gabe. I can't even take a shower in peace. <laughs> Cleanest <laughs> man in everything. broadcasting, huh? I hope you heard everything. Well... I didn't get completely clean. I may have to run through a car wash here uh, later. But my, went, from, uh, went from mechanic to plumber, I'll tell you. He's going to have to unclog them pipes later. Yeah, the shower resembles the bottom of a shop floor. But anyway, Absolutely. back on the racetrack. <laughs> person who really took advantage of this is Shane Paris in that 81 machine because as everybody was breaking away, looks like Andrew Payne actually went wide on the exit of three, and Parrish was able to capitalize, securing that top five position. And by the way, that was halfway. So lock your picks in. That's it. You can't change him now. Yeah, Parrish has actually done pretty good for tire wear. He's passed a couple guys in the past five laps on that inside line, and it wasn't one of these gimmies either. I'll tell you, he actually had to earn it every time he went down through the corner. You're going back to the 11 of Buzz Moore, he still seems to be doing a fantastic job keeping that thing in the top ten. He tried to go low on pain earlier. Right now he's in sixth place position. Again, we talk about him because he started 20th with absolutely no time and doing a fantastic job in the top ten this evening. Buzz Moore in that 11 machine continues to impress. And really, he's been the underdog story. He hasn't broken into victory lane, but he has been close. His paint behind him slaps the wall and coming out of two and two. That's going to secure that sixth spot for him for now. That number 93 still hanging pretty strong, but now he's going to have to deal with William Moore in that number 58 Air Force for Fusion. Another one of those. Buzz Moore and William Moore. Uh, That's a lot of more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no relation. But those guys, they've really been the under. I mean, you got David Washington, you got Colin Bowden, but who's always behind them? Who's always right there in the thick of it? Buzz Moore, the 11, and the 58 of William E. Moore. Those guys always getting it done on the racetrack. And maybe just one day, 
we'll see Buzz Moore in that number 11 take that Budweiser machine back to victory lane. Now, after all this race, of course, you haven't witnessed a lot of it, uh, Gabe, but I'm not going to ask you who your pick is because obviously you missed a lot of it, uh, unclogging drains anyways there. But I'm thinking right now I'm keeping my eye on Bonwell. Not to say he's going to win it, not to say he's not going to win it, but I'll tell you what, he's been driving a fantastic race all night long, starting in the top 10 in 10th right now, currently in the ninth position. Even though it's one position, anything can happen. Fuel wear is going to be gone here shortly, one of the big players in this race, because I'll tell you what, long-term races, well, we already seen one uh, guy slip up with tires earlier. That would be the uh, 03 of uh, Jones. And unfortunately, he is back in the 12th position, but gaining back up very slowly. A little bit of damage to that rear end. He's happened uh, earlier on in the race, though, but doesn't seem to be affecting Arrow all that much. Now, the full fuel run, you can get about 33 laps, but I believe, what are we running, 14 gallons? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, we're 75%. All the drivers told me they could get between 20 and 25 laps. And real quick, you guys were talking about Buzz Moore. I'm completely out of the race, got the helmet off. Ray suit off. I'm up here in, Vic, in uh, the uh, commentator stand with you guys. Buzz Moore, you were talking about real quick. We're going to take a chance to do a Domino's driver profile, if you do not mind. Buzz Moore is from Highland Springs, Virginia. He always races at number 11. Uh, Budweiser, Kentucky Fried Chicken, Chevrolet, which is a great combination for a lunch, afternoon, if you get the afternoon off from work. His team is HS Speed. His sponsors are Budweiser, KFC, and B&E Small Engine Repair. He wants to give a special thanks to uh, his wife, family, the good Lord. He's got 21 years in real racing. He has a 1996 win in the first 31 straight kart races when he started Capital City he Speedway. Guy spinning 93 Go ahead. It looks like he got tapped from behind by the 17th oh, section. He will bring up a caution. He stays on the asphalt. It was just a slight tap. He'll tap the wall and unfortunately go down to the infield, but he'll stay on the asphalt when he stops. The caution will come out. And it also looks like a separate incident with the 54 of Brandon Cruz. We'll take a look at that here on the replay. Yeah, it looks like actually Brandon Cruz in the 54 machine. He was coming off of Pitt Road at the same time the 93 spun. And when he came down the racetrack, he spun right in front of him. He did a really good job of missing it, but he ended up sending it through the infield and spinning out in turn three as well. You know, though, this might be an advantage to the 54 being he just pitted. That'll keep him up on the lead lap if everybody else pits. That'll put him out front with four fresh good years and a full tank of fuel. Yeah, I just pulled that Rifleo fans. It looks like the 93 of Andrew Payne. He was racing hard. He got into the corner. He just got loose coming off the corner. He lost a little bit of momentum in the 17. Had nowhere to go. Just barely touched him. And that spun the uh, 93 in the wall. That brings out our next caution. Yes, sir, I agree 100% with that. Uh, I am correcting myself here. Brandon Cruz is actually the first car one lap down. That'll give him the lucky dog back on the lead lap, but he'll start at the tail end. It'll also give him an advantage to go back in and get some more tires and fuel to be up with the uh, pack this time, guys. The caution is out here just past halfway. It's Colin Bowden, who is out front. Led pretty much the entire back half of this race so far. For the last 20, 30 laps, that number 20 has been on top of the famous scoring pile on here at Indy. And of course, that main pagoda there on the front straightaway. Who's going to be the first Domino's driver to win this year at the Brickyard? It's looking to be that number 20 machine. But Terrence Al Rico, that driver. But look who is coming through the field. It's David Washington, who's now going to pit from third. And Jesse Abraham looks like he's actually going to stay out back there. It looks like Brandon Cruz, obviously the same exact thing, but actually being a lap down, he can't pit this lap legally anyway, so he'll follow that 97 machine of Jesse Abraham down the front chute. Everybody else looks, by the way, that, that front end of Jesse Abraham machine is a little bit damaged. I just happened to see there, Gabe. I'm not certain if that's going to affect too bad or not, but he's got a pit for that uh, for that reason at least. Is it coming to the pit boxes? Anybody, any mistakes? Doesn't look like it. Who is that? I happen to see that. That's trying to Nick see. Nick Reynolds. Nick Reynolds in the number 14 machine. The earlier, like by the way. Earlier, through pit road. Yeah, earlier, by the way, I think he may have done the same thing as Jack Watts did earlier. And that's exactly what I'm seeing here. What he did, he missed his pit. Jack Watts did the same exact move earlier. When he did, he pulled it back out, took the second round, and went back into his pit and unfortunately lost several positions because of it. Yeah, I just noticed the uh, 58. 
of Tanner, excuse me, the 42 of Tanner Talrico beat everybody off the pit road. There was a little bit of contact between the 20 uh, and the 98 of Dave Washington, the 20 of Colin Bowden uh, coming off the pit road. So this is going to definitely reset the restart starting order for this restart. Yeah, it looks yeah. like as soon as Tanner came out of his pit box, he pulled high to get in front of David Washington, actually to miss the 20 at Colin Mountain, who was pulling out of the first pit box. He pulls out of pit road, loses it just a little bit, and into David Washington. Washington also gets a tap from the 20 machine. Yeah, you beat me to that, game. I happen to see that same exact thing. I highly agree with exactly what happened there. Right now, looking at the 54 of Brandon Cruz, I'm trying to see if, they, if what they're going to happen here. Uh, now, let me ask you this. I believe everybody's got a pit for the lucky dog to get the lucky dog, no? Well, if the 54 was smart, he'd stay on the racetrack because he is in the wave around position. He can't get the lucky dog. Now, he is one lap down, but I think the lucky dog is actually going to go to the 13 of Curtis Young, who's actually on pit road at the moment. So whoever was the first car on the track a lap down other than the 54 because the 54 was involved in that caution. But it looks like, well, no, I'm actually, so he can't pit if he's going to take the wave around. If he had the lucky dog, he could pit as soon as uh, at the two to go. I'll tell you what, while we're sitting here, we're going to get this running order sorted out. We're going to sit here on our caution, long caution laps here at the Brickyard. We'll be right back here from the ES Billiards, I believe, 200. Ray, you want to confirm that? Uh, no, actually, it would be cross continent, cross -continent at 250. Yeah. 250, excuse me. Yes, Bill, you're, uh, see, see what happens when you're late to the show. You see what happens <laughs> when we have so many great sponsors? It's Absolutely. actually the cross continent racing 250 here from the Domino's TYJ from, or excuse me, Top Shelf Cup Series live from Indianapolis. You see what happens when I don't do this very often. <laughs> Nick Reynolds in the lead, but will he come down? We'll be right back here on All Pro Broadcasting. Sports Chevrolet, and you're watching All Pro Broadcasting. Back here live at Indianapolis for Cross Continent Racing 250. Tanner Talrico is in the lead. Nick Reynolds actually ended up coming down pit road. Now we're going to be lined up for the restart here with 41, I believe, laps to go here at the famous Brickyard, Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, Indiana. Gabriel Wood alongside Ray Richer and Robert McFarlane chimes in from time to time. 
your head at this. I don't expect to hear much, but when he does, it's exciting. It's also exciting to see these drivers get back. Colin Bowden trying to get the jump on it, and it ends up fighting. It's Tarrant Rico. He gets a great restart, and now Bowden down to the inside. He changes lanes. Now they're going to be three wide by the time they get to turn number one. Washington looking for the advantage here, but he'll take over the third place spot. He'll fall in behind Bowden. The 20 car took a great trance off the beginning of that run, trying to get to the low side. We'll go back a little farther in the field to the 56 of Bonwell. He'll be the low side of the 17 of Sexton. And I'll tell you what, there's a door-to-door -door slap coming off of two, but they'll still keep it straight. They'll go down the back chute, challenging each other pretty hard. Just ahead of them looks to be the 03. No, I'm sorry, the 58 of William E. Moore, which actually, he must have fell back through the field a little bit because he started fifth. Looks like he's almost back to the eighth spot, Dave. Yeah, a little bit of trouble there on the restart. I think everybody kind of stacked up as soon as they went three wide, but that battle between Bonwell and the 17 sorts out. And I tell you what, Dylan Jones is impressing the heck out of me because now he was in the eighth spot, now up to sixth, and now going after a top five spot with a car that has been wrecked twice. At 0-3 still, you cannot kill that race car. You can't kill that driver, or at least his spirit. And I tell you what, that 20, he's... I mean, he started off with a decent restart, was able to get the line down, but that lead's just kind of stagnated there, Ray. So I think the 42, once he gets the clean air, we've seen the lead fluctuate back and forth from a good gap now to Tanner reeling him in. And I think we're seeing that again, but a good entry there for the 20. As they go into turn number three here on lap number 61, closing in. We're just inside now, 40 laps to go. Keep in mind earlier, the 20 of Bowden turned around and walked away from the 42 for just a short period of time. All he has to do is do that same exact thing, obviously, behind him right now. At the stripe right now, we'll see the difference in time. It is .266, which under a little bit than last time, .281. So he's got a little something for the 42 of Terrence Tallarico, and he'll be using it here shortly. All he has to do is get that rhythm down. But you know one thing, when he was up front before in clean air, he didn't have to pass anybody to keep that rhythm down. So that's going to be an interesting pass once it comes to it. 03 of Jones right now in the fifth place spot. He got around the 8 of one of Parrish about a lap and a half ago. Now Parrish, I think, let him go because he's watching his tire wear. Earlier, Parrish went through the field, got about five cars in that last run while everybody's tires started wearing. So it's not a bad move again to let people buy, get into your rhythm, and save your rubber. Down the front straight away. Parrish trying to reel in Dylan Jones, but it's not happening. Let's check the gap now. It's 2.66, now 2.82. So it's gapping just a little bit here as Colin Bowden goes into turn number one, trying to reel in the 42 of Tanner Talrico. Talrico, I believe, hasn't won since Atlanta. Yeah, he's only got one win on the season. He hasn't won since Atlanta. And looking through the field of drivers, Colin Bowden, I'm looking for the other teams. He hasn't run that much this year. I believe that 20 machine has won this year, but I'm not sure. But Tanner Talrico has it won since the early stages of the year. I believe 12 races ago in Atlanta. Take a look right now at the standings. I'll let you know here very short on that, Gabe. Nope, here um, he is. Yeah, I found him. 25th in points, 10 starts. One pole, no top fives, and no wins. So a tough season so far for Colin Bowden, but it seems to be turning around here, even if he doesn't get the win. I'll tell you, he, he still has a heck of a chance at this. He's backed off just a little bit. Last lap, .288. Right now, .365 at the stripe. And of course, it only records that when we go across the front stretch. But still, it seems to reflect here, obviously, on the track. He seems to be back of the old, about six car lengths behind him. But guess who's behind him? The 98 of Washington. Looking to challenge. But Washington is buying his time with them tires as well. Keep in mind, again, seven, eight laps into a run. They seem to keep the ball off. And that's where it separates the men from the boys. If you can keep a steady rhythm down to keep up with everybody else, people will fall off, and that gives you a chance, obviously, to make that pass. And it looks like Watson is doing exactly that right now. And as I say that, he's getting to the back bumper of the 20. Only two back right now to him. Catching him down the front shoot. We'll see what happens down in turn one. And the one thing these drivers have to realize is that, you know, you can't run the same line. And I know this tire model's been a little bit different than the past, you know. The old tire model, the car would get tight. You'd have to drive it a lot different here, except, you know, excluding here. I mean, a lot of places, the tire just slows down. You could run your same line. It just loses speed. Here, you have to keep backing up your entry, and that's where a driver like Dave Washington can actually capitalize because he's been doing this for so long. He knows these lines. He knows how to do it. He probably runs about 300 laps. 
before getting in the car at any race. He just practices and practices, and he knows the lines he needs to run. And as I say that, Colin Bowden's actually pulling away just a little bit, but that gap's have now kind of stagnated between the top three. Getting a little bit farther back in the field. As I say that, the 58 taps the lot right in front of the 97. He'll go around, straighten it back up. Great save by the 58. The and William Davis. Advantage. William Davis will take with advantage a great run. down the front, shoot and get by both of them, actually. Two for one special on the front straightaway, lap number 65. William Davis moves up into the top 10 with that move. I was actually watching the 97 of Abrams at the time. He tried to go to the inside of the 90, or excuse me, the 58, and unfortunately wasn't totally successful. The 58 shot just a little bit, got a little bit sideways. There was a bit of, call, of talk on the radio for just a minute, but great piece of driving by the 58. He gathered it back up. I've been watching that Abrams to see if he can get back to the top 10, and he was just about there, and obviously that little incident, unfortunately, uh, ruined that part at this point. I'll tell you, when do we need to watch the 58 here? Just keep an eye on it because he's doing a good job hanging on to it, but that car is loose and on the edge of out of control. He came to turn two last time by, and the car was sideways the entire time. Look at him. Look at the hands trying to catch it. He ends up walking it up the racetrack. That's how you had to drive this car in the late stages of a run. You just kind of point the car and as it gets loose walk it up the racetrack and he's doing a pretty good job of doing it yeah we call it we call it in the racing world sawing on the wheel because basically left and right left and right left and right multiple times and that means that the car just does not want to turn obviously a little bit of a push but not harsh to a uh, basically a loose condition and you've got to kind of follow that front end or actually excuse me have the rear end follow the front end as best as possible and being a skittish you've got to keep counteracting it and again Hence, he's sawing on the wheel. He's doing a fantastic job keeping a straight right at the moment in time, especially after that incident. Left a little bit of uh, tire wear back when he went sideways, but otherwise, keeping up with the pack right now. Washington able to get by Colin Bowden, I believe, that last time I or the time before. So the 98 of David Washington moved him up into the second spot. Really didn't even lose all that much time. Tanner Tauriko, so that number 98 machine is coming looking for win number five on the 2017 season out of 15 races. So that means one third of his starts. If he can get it done, have he's gone to victory lane. Well, second in points right now. He seems to be in second place, doing a great job. Six places where he started this evening. He is last lap it was .624 and about, oh, I'd say 10 car lanes, excuse me, eight car lanes back. Right now, that seems to be shortening, going down the short shoot into turn four. We'll see, he'll go right to the bottom, put those tires way in that white line. Tanner Tel Rico a little bit higher than that. They'll go down the front chute. We'll see what the time is right now at the strike, Gabe. By the way, as I say that, 0-3 of Dylan Jones looking for the pass on Hill. He's already been in the top five tonight. Of course, like you said earlier, wrecked twice. He'll take over the fourth place spot. Gene Parrish trying to follow suit, but a 55 will block that door. Right now, three cars fighting for that top five. Gap rose a little bit between Tanner Talrico and David Washington. Now to seven and a half tenths of the second. And that teammate of his, Dylan Jones, as you said, continuing to walk his way up the field. Next car on his list is the third place driver of Colin Bowden. Down the back straightaway. And you can visibly see that gap shrinking down. Bowden, he's still hanging on to the back bumper of the number 98 machine. But I don't think he's got the car anymore to get the victory. And it, looks, it seems like whenever Tanner Tyrico is able to get in clean air, that car just wants to walk away. Keep in mind, Gabe, we're only about, I'm going to say, 15 laps into this run. They still have to pit one more time no matter what's going to happen. I mean, they, they may have to get, get twice. twice. I'm thinking possibly twice, like you were saying. Depends if a caution comes out, which obviously we seem to have uh, seen that happen at the end of a run a lot of times this evening. But that 20, like you said, stuck to, like glue to the 98 of Washington. Trying to keep that draft and keep that speed up. But this is an advantage also to Washington. If they keep together like that, there's a good chance he's going to keep that speed and catch that 42 or Tanner Tallarico. Well, I'll tell you what. You go down the back straightaway. Look at this. He's coming. That gap coming down. But I think Tanner's just got the better car in the corners. I think he's able to get the exit better as Bowden goes down all the way to the rumble strip there in turn number three, trying to get the car to rotate, get a good exit. And look at here. Watch how Colin Bowden enters the corner. He enters high and exits low, making the car as straight as possible on exit, trying to get that straight line speed. It looks like it's working. He's going just a little bit faster. He's actually going to catch David Washington by the time they get into turn number one. See here, enters high. Got a little bit loose there, but he's going to enter low and try and get it off as straight as possible. I think that air is affecting the rear end of that car off that corner. He gets a little bit skittish. May move back and forth about six, eight inches roughly. 
gets it back under control, of course. Down the back shoot, they'll go off of two. Lose a little bit of time right there behind the 98. But in the tracks, they'll go to the inside. Getting blocked by Washington. Right oh, he's going to force him. He's forcing him down to the shit in the grass. Oh, he's going to push him going into turn number three. Pushes him up the racetrack. Aggressive move from Washington, but it looks like it's going to pay off. Bowden is not going to like that move. No, not at all. Almost looked like that move we saw with Jimmy Johnson there earlier with uh, the 42 of Kyle Larson. And I'll tell you what, it works here, too. you just seen that firsthand. He gets back in the track. Tyler Tellerico pulls away actually a little bit more with that move, of course, placing and dicing back in second and third place. He actually gained almost a second right now at the strike. Yep. What uh, Bowden does not realize is that aggressive move and Washington as well, they messed, they kind of screwed themselves up because they were catching him that last lap. But now they're going to have to gain up that back their momentum. And now there's no chance of them catching him before we do, do pit stops again. You know, you say that too. Look right behind them. The teammate of the 98 of Dylan C. Jones in the 03 has the advantage of catching up to the 20 of Bowden. Now right now making it three cars deep. And as fast as he's been all night, don't be surprised if he tries it in about a lap and a half. Try to get by that 20, hook up with the 98, and obviously try to go to the front. And watch Bowden. He's caught to him now. Can he get the run? Down the front straight away. Washington goes low. Bowden's not going to fall for this one again. Can he wait until he gets down to the entry of the corner? Let's see if he goes to the bottom. He will. He's going to go to the inside. Taps into him Washington. Up the track. Oh! All right, man. Caution is out. Caution is out. What are you Bowden into the wall hard, unfortunately. Hits the bottom side of the track, takes the car up, and unfortunately takes out Washington at the same time. Washington will take and get back underway. Up against the wall. We'll get the replay pulled up back for you guys. Hold on just a second. Replay getting up there for you. Bowden, I predicted it. I could see he was building that speed and just waiting for his moment. But Washington was too far down the racetrack. He got the entry. He got the entry almost perfect. But Washington pushed down, trying to catch, trying to pinch him. But Bowden, with the aggressive move, ended up, ended up hitting him and overcorrecting into the outside wall. Single car accident. And look at Shane Parrish barely getting through there. Yeah, just a matter of inches for the 81 of Parrish. I actually thought he touched the bottom side at first, but now I see the replay. That's exactly what happened. He overdrove it a little bit. When he comes through the corner, unfortunately, collecting the 98 at the same time. We'll see how damaged these cars are right now. Looking at the front end of Bowden. I think this is going to end his chances for tonight by all means, actually, guys. I'll tell you what, the amount of damage on the 98, it may end up taking him out of contention too, but I'll tell you what, that puts Dylan Jones into this race. And Ray, we're setting up for a great finish. Yeah, and, I believe so. And depending on how many laps they get under caution here before they have to pit, huh, this will be a fuel mileage race. Yeah, seems yes. to be that way, of course, with 25 laps most of the time on these runs with a three-quarter tank. As I see, by the way, a 98 of Washington will take an early pit stop. Of course, that'll send the tail end of the field if he can get back out in time. There's some pretty extensive damage under that car. Uh, I, obviously, the effect there left and right. He's going to be in there for a good couple minutes getting that fixed. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you, Gabe. And, Ray, we're going to take our final commercial break, fans. Make sure you tune back in here in 60 seconds. We'll be right back. You'll get all the answers to who comes off pit road first, who's going to win the free large Domino's three topping pizza, and who is going to be the winner of that pizza? We'll be right back in one minute.
back here back here live under caution and our town Rico in the number 42 is in the lead with Dylan Jones behind him if you're just joining us big big race implications Colin Bowden with an aggressive move down to the inside for a second of David Washington they end up going into the outside wall Colin Bowden knows first Washington still under power but just a lot of damage to that number 98 machine. One lap down is Washington at the moment. Jeremy Crandall point. actually in the lead. That's what I was about to point out to you, Gabe. One thing happened real weird there. Now, obviously, we had two other guys earlier tonight go and miss their pit boxes. Jeremy went into pit, and as everybody else did, he cruised right by his. He never even turned the wheel. Actually, he pulled right back out. I assumed he was going to pit next lap, assuming he missed his box. I don't see that happening. Right now, he's going to lead this thing, and it looks like he's going to lead the pack off if he doesn't pit this time. Better is just trying to get some laps lit. Either way, good on Jeremy Crandall. A little bit of aggressive move. <laughs> May work out. Uh, also, Colin Bowden, Nick Reynolds, and Michael Jeans, all three have retired officially from this race. I'm just seeing this now. So we're going to get the restart here. And Tanner Talrico, you can see him running the apron, trying to get everything into the virtual fuel pickup, if that is a thing, trying to save as much fuel as he can. Now, by the way, second place restart if Jeremy Crandall pits the 03 of Dylan C. Jones. I'll tell you, two wrecks tonight, top five so far, incredible drive with the corner, off the corner for every time with that car. He's going to be in the top three on this restart, bud. Now, how do you wreck a car twice? and get to second with arguably one of the fastest cars in the field. Save that question when he makes a top three because I'll tell you what, it's going to be a fantastic answer because I know I couldn't answer it, but there's a great example right in front of us. I'll tell you what, I know one driver who can't answer it. And Crandall showing pit? Yes, he is. So just going to stay out and get the lap lit and come on to pit road. Yeah, not a bad move on his part. He, he, stopped, he started towards the back at the early this tonight, and the thing is, he's kept on a lead lap so when he comes back out right now as long as Washington doesn't get his car fixed he'll start in the 14th spot after starting the, the race 25th just a little bit of top off of fuel and some tires and he's still on a lead lap so he's in good shape yeah I tell you what this right here is going to come down to strategy looks like we got about 23 maybe 22 laps to the end of this race if we go green and uh, that's exactly what Jeremy Crandall in that number 73 scoops uh, machine is counting on. He just filled up, topped off. He's hoping all these guys in front of him will have to pit one more time, but we'll have to wait and see. That's actually a good, right move on his part. I've seen him do that before, and it paid off big time towards the front of the field. And actually, you can get about 23, 25 laps out of these cars because, again, three quarters of a tank, 75%. 14 gallons of fuel, that about as far as it'll make it when you go full throttle. And here you want to do that because it's a fast speedway. As they go down the back stretch, of course, they'll double up two by two on the outside that Dylan C. Jones. We're going to watch for him to make a move right off the bat. But keep in mind, he's got some damage to the back end of that car. Doesn't seem to be affecting it much. If anything, it's helping him turn through the corner, and he's doing a great job driving it this evening. Yes, sir, and Jeremy is driving that Scoops Old Fashioned Ice Cream and Charlie's Asphalt Maintenance 73 Chevrolet SS. He's in 14th. He's looking to gain a lot of positions. These guys in front of him have to make a pit stop to uh, fill up before the end of the race. Go ahead, Gabe. All right, guys, we're getting ready for the restart here. I'm hearing from Villa Jones. Might be able to make it. Might be able to make it. So the second place driver on the cusp of making it to the end of the race, but we're going to have to wait and see. Jones, Tal Rico, Tal Rico fires. Highest Jones has ever been this race. He started in third, now up to second. As they go to the start and finish line, Tal Rico moves up the racetrack. Now we can see what that number 03 of Dylan Jones can do. The final hope for Aegis Motorsports going into turn number one. I tell you what, it's, it's, it's not looking too bad for the 03 as they go into turn number well, two. We got a car around the back. Looked like the 81 of Parrish, unfortunately, got things spun. We got a collection of cars. Looks like William like E. Moore. Not green right, flag. Finally it turns to yellow, guys. William E. Moore, and now these guys can officially make it. And that, I mean, we've got about five, six, seven cars left. <laughs> 
it looks like a case of a right front blown tire for the 81. He went down to turn one. The thing just went immediately up towards the wall. Went down the track, and there's numerous cars to mention that Taken got collected in that one, guys. I'm back for the replay here, so I can see it. He reset in the fourth position. Gabe, one player that made it through that wreck, the 73 of Jeremy Crandall, who has definitely enough fuel to make it at the end. Of course, that's not going to be a factor now, but that'll give him about a good eight positions back up through the pack. What happened to the Shane Parrish? He didn't even turn like an equipment failure? Yeah, I don't believe yeah, it looks like made him a tire. No, he didn't yeah. even attempt to turn. Yeah, it looks like an equipment failure on the uh, right front of his car. Sent him in the wall. Same thing happened to me earlier in the race. Unfortunate. Okay, well, I'm going to investigate it just a little bit to see if I can get a hold of the 81 of Parrish. Yeah, with that being said, we'll see if we can get a little bit of a word from the 81 of the Parrish machine. That'll put him back. Uh, Gabe, back. Uh, did you hear anything from, uh, from Parrish? Yep. Uh, computer failure for the 81 machine. Tough break for him, the internals of the computer uh, failing on the number 81 machine. Running in fourth. Also, Ray, we hadn't talked about him a little bit. Look who's in fourth. Buzz Moore, our 20th place starter. Now top five. Of course, we talked about him a little bit. Man on the move, that 11 Budweiser machine. I'll tell you what, he's been fantastic all night long. He's got a great chance at the top five here. But, but... Behind him, oh, I just read that name wrong. So, you go ahead. <laughs> Jeremy Crano, by the way, will end up in the 8th position. He started 25th. And the move, though, again, Buzz Moore, I think, started 20th. Again, uh, looks to be in the 4th place in the restart. Well, I'll tell you what, the person is always uh, is also on the way up the field. The Mountain Monsters Toyota Camry, the number 18, a Jason Cardwell, a little bit of a teammate to David Washington. He's just now getting back into the swing of iRacing. I tell you what, a top five run in dominoes in this series with how competitive the top front of the field is. Might not be a bad return. Started 18th, now up to 5th. Unlike Buzz Moore, practiced 22nd. So that he's, uh, Buzz Moore actually practiced in the 10th spot, so he's shown speed all race or all weekend. But that uh, that 18 machine, he's picked it up here in the uh, past few laps. You know, I'd, I'd like to like to say an attaboy right now to that 54, Brandon Cruz Monsavis. Unfortunately, he's got some pretty good smoke coming out the back of that machine. He came back off a of pit road, but that, I don't believe that machine's going to make it to the end of the race, unfortunately, Gabe. Yes, sir, Gabe and Ray uh, got radio communication with Ryan A. Hill in the number 55. He is running in third right now. Looks like he's got a great car. No damage, Ryan, I think. Let us know if you have any damage, and how does the car feel? How do you think you can get the win tonight? Uh, save more fuel than Tanner and Dylan. That's pretty much the best thing I can do right now because long runs, I don't have anything for them. Okay, we're on lap 80. You got like 20 laps to go. Are you coming to pit road to get fuel? Uh, we'll be getting another caution probably. Because I saw a bunch of guys behind me pit, so they're going to definitely be on a better strategy than us four up front, which is Tanner, Dylan, myself, and Buzz. So I think it's all going to boil down if we get another caution or not. So you're coming down pit road, Buzz Moore in the 11, Budweiser, Kentucky Fried Chicken, I love that combination, right behind you, the 03 of Dylan C. Jones in front of you. You guys are coming down pit road, as well as the leader, excuse me, y'all are staying out, my bad. So if we do not get another caution, it's going to be up to who gets the best restart. Either that or who saves the best fuel. So you are close on fuel. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, me and Colin were actually trying to save fuel. We roughly, we were saving fuel and we were trying to sh do 20 lap strategies. About 20 laps is what you got in a full tank and we're at 20 to go right now. Go ahead, now, Gabe. Now, Ryan, I gotta ask. You saw that restart. You had the guys in front of you. Who do you think's faster, Jones or Talrico? That's a good question. Jones, I'm surprised he's as fast as he is with the damage that he has. Yeah, you got a full view at it, don't you? Yeah, uh, it, uh, you can't even read the lobster on the back of his car. Tanner has no damage, and he's been running up there in the front the whole race. To be honest, I think I kind of hope they pull a Mark Truex Jr. or Kyle Busch, but uh, that's, that's my view of it. I think they're both equally fast. Well, I'll tell you what, one DBR car goes out of the race. The next car, the other DBR car, Ryan Hill, 
you end up moving up into the top three, so you think you can capitalize on your teammate's mistake. We'll wait and see here. We should get the one to go this time. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. Good luck. Hopefully, you do not finish second. All right, thank you. Well, I don't know. He's famous for it. <laughs> Got him just as he left. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah have, I had to leave it with a sting. The 55, <laughs> I don't, if, if you haven't been following Domino's, he has been the heartbreak kid. Finally broke through to get a victory, but throughout preseason and throughout the early parts of the year, it was second place, second place, second place, third place. And he finally broke through and got a win. I can't remember where the race was, but since then, he's still waiting to get another victory under his belt. So the heartbreak kid trying to get another victory. I tell you what, guys, I'm seeing the most unusual thing I've ever seen at Indy here. Uh, these cars, cup cars, they've been going down the uh, access road in turn one and two and three and four. The top five, six, seven cars, I'm guessing they're doing that because it's a short way around to save fuel. Yeah, I never thought about that. That's actually a, a smart way of doing it. I know uh, I was taught earlier by one of the drivers to stay on the low side, especially like at Daytona, to try to save fuel and shut it off, of course, because, again, you're cutting out a good, God, I'd say at least maybe 60 to 80 feet of that corner, and that is a bright move to do. And I tell you, you know, here at iRacing, your car does not run out of fuel or it doesn't start burping at zero, you know, at about maybe 0.5 or 0.4 of a lap left. So about half a lap left, the car starts to burp. So if you can get an extra two, 300 feet, that could be the difference between winning the race or not. Oh, absolutely. I highly agree with that. Now, by the way, Gabe, Robert, one thing that we're going to have interesting here, of course, <laughs> we have about half the field left, unfortunately, on the track. And uh, I was looking back to the 10th place of Josh Bonwell, and I don't even see him, so I'm assuming he's in the garage area at this point in time. All the way back to ninth place of Brandon Cruz Monsavis, and he's on pit lane, and I think they pushed him back to the garage here shortly. So we're only going to have eight cars to run this race out, unfortunately, but uh, I think it's still going to be a, a fantastic fight. We're going to have 17 laps to go when the green flag flies, and uh, a lot of guys are going to be shuffling this up pretty quick, so it's like a nice Saturday night, big track race. Yeah, it looks like a little heat race we got going on here. 20 laps, 18 laps to go when we get to the line this time by. It'll be your Domino's, full, excuse me, Domino's Top Shelf Cup Series. May as well call it a Thursday night feature. We got about eight cars on the racetrack going for one spot. Only Tanner Tarico has it. Your top two or your top three, two of them haven't won since early in the year. The other one had, don't believe, has won in the series so far. Still and Joseph, they come in line. Green flag in here. Good restart for the 42 of Tanner Tarico. And here comes Ray right Hill to the inside. Trying to go for second. Door Jones, shut right now by the old door. Down the short chute, they'll go into turn two. Nose and tail. Did about uh, two, one to two cars separating each one of them. All the way back to the fourth place of Buzz Moore. Behind him, Jason Cardwell fell back about eight lengths. He's got a lot of guys challenging for that position because that's the top five right there, Gabe. Now, balance between saving fuel and trying to get the lead. Jones shows, I think he has a faster race car, but will he try and push it? End up running out of fuel toward the end if we go caution free. We've got eight cars on the racetrack, so there's a good chance we will not get another restart. While this is going on, oh, we got one car in the fence. Looks like the 93 maybe of Andrew Payne. Yes, it is. The number 93 is a good on the front straightaway. So Jesse Abraham is actually going to get around him for that seventh spot. Back up front, starting to even out. Equal distance between your top three. Actually, top four is now Buzz Moore. Look at Buzz Moore. That driver. 10, yeah, top 10 uh, speed. But I tell you what, he's staying tucked up right with drivers who are running three to four tenths faster than him all during practice. Now I'll tell you also, back to the 73 of Jeremy Cranley. He hasn't been much of a mover all night long, but he did lead a couple laps under caution. That is a few bonus points, and he's one of the few cars that doesn't have a dent on it. He'll try to go to the inside of Jason Cardwell, but not going to be able to pull it off this time. Not really close enough. He's got to buy this time a little bit. But uh, I'll tell you what, there's a guaranteed top ten in his future this evening. It's been a hard year for Jeremy Crandall. Practice 21st, qualified 25th with no time on the board. That driver running in the sixth spot, as you said, guaranteed top ten. So may not have been the fastest car, but he did run a very smart race. Jeremy Crandall will walk away from here. Maybe a top five at least for his troubles. 
Back up front, Dylan Jones letting out just a little bit to Tanner Tauriko, at least by the start finish line, but now starting to be reeled back in. Tauriko is down the back straightaway. It'll be 15 laps to go this time by, and here comes Jesse Abraham for the sixth spot. Gets around the number 73 of Jeremy Crandall, so the sixth spot's now going to go to Jesse Abraham. Good job by Jesse. Still got a lot of laps to go left in this. Even though it's eight cars, it's still a good dog fight, and any one of them can win it. At the same time, we're talking about that. The 93 of Andrew Payne will challenge the 73 of Crandall. He'll go down the inside, down the front, shoot. Jordan Jordan will go into turn one. It looks like Payne will have the advantage, and of course, he'll take that spot. A little bit of squ squiggle by the 73. He'll kind of fall back in line into eighth place and kind of take up the back of the field at this point. Slaps the wall just a little bit on the exit of one, but he keeps the momentum going. Almost like a little bit of Bristol. Gets the car to slap and hits the wall again. So Payne not able to adapt to the car getting tight. Unfortunately, unfortunate for the 93. Moving up the field, but it's over aggressiveness just keeps biting him. Meanwhile, Talrico still trying to keep that lead and still trying to save a little bit of fuel here. Jones, he was three tenths behind that last time by. What's it going to be this time? Hits the wall just a little bit. That's going to leg out the gap just a little bit. Uh, now on to lap number 87. .332, last lap .270. Gained a little bit on that lap. Tal Rico still leads the field, of course, coming down to front shoot. Everybody being aggressive, trying to get everything they possibly can at this point. Again, 13 laps left, uh, left remaining on the speedway. Eight cars able to obviously get it. From first to eighth. 4.62 seconds back to the 93 machine of Andrew Payne. Of course, again, Payne trying to adapt right now. A little bit of damage done left to that car, of course, from a few incidents earlier in the race, but able to keep up with the field nonetheless. Still not a shabby place to be at four seconds, actually four and a half seconds back. Now gets the move on Crandall there for the seventh spot. Tanner Tal Rico, excuse me. Sorry, still gets around him for that seventh spot. So Jeremy Crandall now will move back down to the eighth spot out of eight cars still running on the racetrack. On the lead lap, that gap comes down again. Here comes Dylan Jones, and now it's getting to the point where he cannot bank on that number 42 running out of fuel. He's going to have to make the move. He's going to have to use a little bit of fuel, catch that 42, and then try and hold him up for the final few laps, closing in on 10 to go here at Indy. With all this happening right behind him, the 55 of Ryan A. Hill. Hill of second over the leader back. But the thing is, keep in mind, Gabe, he's got to save fuel as well. But backing off like that, he's got a nice cushion behind him with the 11 of Buzz Moore. There's about a good 10 to 12 car length separating the two. Both of them saving fuel because with these guys two pounding it up front, they may run out in the last lap, and it's a big advantage to the 55 and the 11. And the one advantage of Jones, Tauriko, is just like running at the head of the pack at Talladega. If you're trying to fuel mileage race, that 42, he's having to cut through the air. That 03 of Dylan Jones, he's able to ride that draft and save just a little bit of fuel from that Ford Fusion. The 03 able to cut it down by about half a tenth again. It's closing down. Talrico running wide there through the entrance and exit of turn two. Almost into the fence goes Talrico. Down the inside, he'll lose it. He'll come back up at a 45 degree angle, straighten it back up, take the advantage to hill the inside, down to the grass, take over second spot. What a way to lose the lead for Tanner Tal Rico. He saves it, but a dangerous way to come back on the racetrack. Now Buzz Moore gets around him. So Buzz Moore up into the top three. Can he get it done? I'll tell you though, that was a fantastic save by the 42 to keep it straight, keep everything under the green. I don't care if he's back in the fourth place, dude. Give him kudos for handling onto that car. That was a lot of hands he had on that wheel. Right now, guys, these tires are completely falling apart on the top five. That would include the 03 of Dylan C. Jones, Ryan A. Hill, Buzz Moore, Thomas Enrico, and Jesse Abraham. The win is going to go to the driver who can maintain old tires on this really, really slick track. Just right now, don't. Jones has that advantage right now. He's way out front. Now, if he can just keep it smooth, he's got the win, I'll tell you. Behind him, Hill, even though he's got, a, well, same basically the same side tires as he had basically in the back pit stop, he's got to be smooth about it as well. If he overdrives the car even a little bit, that's the advantage of the 03. That Phantom Arm, that's number 55, trying to reel in and trying to save fuel at the same time. Now he's just going to have to try and salvage second, which you know he does not want to do. Let's look at the gap. This time, by as they come to 10 to go, 
three tenths of a second. So Ryan Hill's got to be saving just a little bit of fuel. And here comes Buzz Moore. Can Buzz Moore move up into second? He's lucking it out on the 42. That 42's got a lot of damage. So Buzz Moore looks to secure a top three podium spot. You got to look two and a half seconds back. That's almost 25 car lengths back to the fifth place spot for the 97 of Jesse Abraham. But again, damaged car still seem to be doing pretty good all night long. Down the back, shoot, he'll go. Still trying to catch that top three. Just not enough laps left to do it, especially if this continues green to the end. Gap looks to maintain just a little bit. Let's look at the gap this time. As they come off a of turn number four, it's going to be nine. Actually, yes, nine laps to go. Having to do a little bit of that here. Buzz Moore, can he reel in for the second spot? But that's going to jeopardize him running in the top three because Tal Rico, if they start getting side by side, Ryan Hill's going to try and hold him off if he has enough fuel. That's going to allow Tal Rico to get back to him. But that's all if he can catch him. He's catching him bit by bit every lap. He's got eight laps to do it. Buzz putting those tires right down on those rumble strips. As I was watching Hill, he had his tires just below the white line. I'll tell you, he cut off a couple extra feet there with Buzz Moore going down that low. But keep in mind, when they hit the rumble strips, especially at these speeds, they will upset these cars just a little bit. Slow them down. A little bit of a handful, of course, especially the tire wear that they've got going on. But as you said, Gabe, that gap between second and third is closing rather quickly. And there's only a few laps left of this race. He might be able to get second place out of this. Four tenths was the gap last time by. Let's look at it. 1.6 was the gap between first and second. Let's look at it this time by. 1.7 to 2.1. So the gap kind of maintains there. But I think Buzz is actually a lot better through the first part of the track. One and two. One especially. Let's see how we can get to turn number two. Takes a little bit wider of an entrance there to turn number two that time by. Looks like Ryan Hill's going to leg out just a little bit of gap. And I think Jesse Abraham, if he can keep a steady pace, he's got a chance of catching Tal Rico. Yeah, Tal Rico, obviously a damaged, uh, damaged bird right now. He's uh, he's trying to keep the speed up, but just doesn't have it. I mean, he's lost a lot when he took to get that wreck there uh, a couple laps ago. And as you say, Jesse Abraham's looking for a top uh, four spot. He's guaranteed almost a fifth right now, considering there's almost two seconds back to the 18 of Jason Cardwell, who right now is battling the 93 of, uh, excuse me, I'm looking at the 18 of Cardwell and the 73 of Jeremy Crandall. 18 right on his bumper trying to get around him down the front too, but maybe they're teaming up to try to get a little bit uh, more out of this race towards the end. What do you think? Yeah, he did. He shoved him right down to turn one and backed off on him. Gonna have to wait and see what they can do here because, I mean, yeah, if they can keep going like this, we know that the 93 of uh, Andrew Payne is a little bit of a damage burn as well. So if he can keep that gap going, just push him just a little bit on entry each time, they might be able to catch him. Yeah, it looks like what they're doing is teaming up here towards the end. Of course, there'll be no uh, teaming up towards that last lap to see if he can take the seventh spot, but it is. He's pushing him around the corner a little bit, trying to keep in that draft, of course, helping Jeremy as we go along. But back up front, Dylan C. Jones. I think it's going to be over a two-second gap when he hits the stripe at this point in time. 1.980 last time, and this time will be... 1.824, I was wrong. He actually cut the lead just a little bit, but not enough time. Five laps to go right now as they go down through the short shoot. Now, with this gap kind of maintaining here, does this mean that both these drivers have enough fuel to make it to the finish? Meanwhile, Buzz Moore, he's falling back from the 55 of Ryan Hill, so it looks like third place locked up. So your top three have stagnated. Actually, all your positions, really, until you fall back to seventh and eighth between Crandall and Cardwell. But I think both, all these drivers are just trying to hang on to these loose race cars if they have enough fuel to make it to the finish. Well, the other thing is, too, now, when you're in that car all alone, of course, you got your spotter talking to you. you got a lot of things going through your head. And you think to yourself, geez, this thing just won't turn. And, man, i got to slow it down. But keep in mind, every other driver on the track is thinking the same identical thing right now. They're all the same amount of tires. Again, some more than others, of course, how they take the corner and so on. But on the same note, you don't run scared. If you run scared, that's where you screw up. And these guys are nice and calm and collective. Not really a lot of challenges going on. I'll go back right now to the 18 of Cardwell. Still in the tire tracks to the 73 of uh, Crandall, but not as close as they were before. Uh, I tell you, I thought that strategy was going to pay off for him, but obviously that doesn't seem to be happening right now. 
wide exit for the 73. He's going to lose a little bit of exit speed down the long back straight away. This might be Carwell's chance. They pretty much have to give up on catching the 93 of pain. Here comes Carwell to the inside. He makes the move. Is the 73 going to be aggressive as they go into turn number three? Side by side. Carwell pushes up the racetrack just a little bit. He's having to break to get the car back down to the racetrack. He's going to have to fight a little bit harder to get past him. That number threat, 73 machine. On the exit of four, Carwell oh, hits the rumble strips. He was able to take, collect it back up. Good set of drive by the 18. I'll tell you, I thought he was going to lose it right there. That may have been the race, of course, if that was the case. Now, a little bit of, up front here. Ryan A. Hill has cut that gap just a little bit more. I think he saved all he could for fuel. He's at 1.9, or excuse me, 1.696 compared to 1.9 last lap. And that gap is slowly shrinking. But you know what? I just think he's going to run out of time. Three laps left. They'll go down to turn three right now. Dylan C. Jones, of course, arcing that corner like he always does. Nice and smoothly coming out. Great exit speed. He'll go down the short shoot to turn four. And still has got about 20 car lengths on the 55 of Hill. Going to be three laps to go this time. Bye. He's going to have to catch him. Because I just talked to Jones on the radio. He is, or excuse me, he has got enough fuel to make it to the finish. Gap this time by. Goes down by 4 1,000. Ryan Hill catching him. <laughs> He's catching him, but, I mean, may as well not be. It's like watching a moped race, you know, <laughs> trying to catch him there, but he's still catching him nonetheless. Again, I think he's going to run out of laps. Down the front shoot they go. Excuse me, down the back shoot they go. A little bit sideways there. Uh, we ended up, we got two and a half laps to go, and I think right now this is going to be one for the books for the top eight, guys. Jeremy Crandall back right now in the seventh position. He's going to pretty much secure that from the 18th of Jason Cardwell. Cardwell tried all night to get by him. Didn't seem to have the luck, obviously, there at the end, but uh, going up right now through the field, the sixth of uh, Andrew Payne, the 93, all alone out there, up to the 97 of Justin Abrams, which actually just got around the 42 of Karen Tallarico, will take over the fourth place spot. Tallarico, again, fighting that car to make it to the end. Popsicle sticks in the air. Two laps to go for Aegis Motorsports and Dylan Jones to get win number one on the 2017 season. Seven starts, two poles, two top fives, three top tens, but no wins for him in this 2017 campaign. But all he's got to do is make the fuel make the fuel last and get through three more miles as he goes into turn number three. I'm going to send it to you, Ray. Bring him to the white flag. Absolutely, bud. He'll turn around, go down the short shoot all alone up towards the wall as he's been doing for the past bunch of times. He's been arcing the corners, keeping that car as straight as possible. Again, he's got enough fuel to take him for it over two second gap last time around. He'll take it down to the stripe right now. We'll see exactly what we've got for a difference, but obviously I believe that's gonna grow. Ryan Hill is doing his best to try to keep up, but just doesn't have the car to take and get to him. Not much change in the second. It's actually 2.1 last lap, 2.1 this lap. White flag will be in the air. Actually, I'm looking and there we go. Turn around, turn four, Dry Dylan Jones will take it down. Sorry, turn two. I'm looking for the white flag, and I don't see it on my screen, so I'm having a little confusion here. I'm not sure white exactly flag. what happened. White flag is indeed in the air in turn three now. He's going to come to the checkered flag this time by if he can hold on to it. Ryan Hill, a distant speck in the mirror. Coming off a of turn number four, this former peak anti-freeze series contender. Can he get it done here? Coming off a of turn number four, the driver, the 0-3 for win number one of the year. He's going to kiss the bricks at the brickyard. From a far second, Ryan Hill will go to the bottom, trying to cut the draft a little bit, buzz more, but buzz again, two seconds back. Doesn't really have much to do on a draft at this point. He'll take up the third place position. Fourth place will be the 97 of Jesse Abrams, and top, of top five will be Tanner Tallarico in the 42 Napa machine. Final few cars across the start finish line. Sticks, Andrew Payne, Jeremy Crandall. Jason Cardwell ends up losing that battle by about a second between 7th and 8th. We're going to take one quick commercial break, let the driver of Dylan Jones, let him get out, let him do his celebration, and then we're going to catch up with him in famous Brickyard Victory Lane. We'll be right back here on All Pro Broadcasting here for the Domino's Top Shelf Cup Series.
here live at the conclusion of the Brickyard race here for the Domino's TYJ Top Shelf Cup Series. And I tell you what, Dylan Jones doing the backwards, I guess, burnout drifting it through turns two. And now going to do it through turns one as well. But we're going to talk to him in just a moment, let him get to victory lane. But first, let's talk to the number 11 of Buzz Moore. I tell you what, it's the little beer wagon that could. Buzz Moore in third place here. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it was a heck of a race out there. It's uh, quite a survival battle, to say the least. But uh, we held on and uh, they were able to pull off the top three there at the end. I'll tell you what, Buzz. Uh, do you have a reason? Because uh, you practiced in the 10th position, so you had speed, but you just didn't qualify. Is there a reason? I didn't want to take any chances early in the race. Uh, I just wanted to see how this thing played out. And uh, I don't know if it could have helped me any to uh, start any further forward or not. And third place is pretty good on my end, so I can't complain. I'll tell you what, we saw that you were racing with those guys. <laughs> Did you kind of breathe a sigh of relief when you saw Tal Rico hit the wall, but it also had to raise the heart rate just a little bit when you saw him come back up the racetrack. Oh, yeah, that that was a little uh, scary, to say the least. Uh, I hope he's all right, though, but uh, yeah, unfortunate for him. But uh, we were able to dodge that and come on through. <laughs> all right, Buzz, anybody you want to thank before we let you go here? Uh, just my sponsors, Budweiser, my wife, and uh, anybody else that makes the thing possible. <laughs> all right, Buzz, well, congratulations. Now we're going to talk, I believe Ray's caught up with a driver who finished in second. Mr. Ryan A. Hill, second place this evening, podium finish. Congratulations, bud. Bring us through those last couple laps, if you would. Yeah. I think I actually oversaved. I mentioned earlier that it was going to be a fuel mileage race. And I think I oversaved a little bit under green. If I stopped, if I, yeah, I don't know. I can make excuses all day long. Dylan had a fast car. How much fuel do you actually have left in the tank? I had two gallons crossing the line. So, that's about four and a half laps. So, I should have let myself go about five laps sooner. Well, you did a fantastic job all night long. A little bit of damage to that car. Not in horrible compared to a few other guys, unfortunately, caught up in events. But uh, I'll tell you, bringing a top uh, top five was even an impressive finish this evening. Anybody you want to thank? Yeah, just thank everybody here at um, Domino's Cup Racing. Sorry. Uh, Michael D'Amico for... The stream and everything, yourself, Gabe, Robert, everybody that puts on the show, obviously everybody at DBR, Colin Bowden, he had a good race going up until the mistakes happened. That's unfortunate for him. So, a good race, to, or good win to Dylan, and good, or good, yeah, blah, blah, sorry. Good third place happens, to Buzz, buddy, good, good third place to Buzz Moore, good seeing another Virginia guy come up here and making it two and three. Absolutely. Ryan A. Hill in the 55, bring it to the second place in the Cross Country 250 this evening. I tell you what, Ray, down here in victory lane, the car was, it was messed up. I can't believe he's done this. He's actually fixed the damage on the left side during his burnouts and destroyed the right side. Jones, how'd you do it? And now the engine's just grenaded. Yeah, we, we planned that right there. Uh, we uh, got a little bit lucky tonight. I mean, we were wrecked twice tonight with the uh, rear end damage here at Indy. Usually that puts a dagger in you. You drop straightaway speed, but we, we somehow were able to keep our straightaway speed and stayed in contention there to give us a shot. Now we gotta ask, well, I know we had a lot of caution laps, but how close were you to running out? How many laps do you have left to fuel? I had 1.8 laps. Exactly. So if uh, we would have stayed green instead of that one caution towards the end, it would have got very interesting. Yeah, I tell you what, drivers like Jesse Abraham may have been just a little bit happy to uh, have pitted there earlier. Did you ever consider pitting under the first caution that we had? Uh, I did, but I was sitting there, what, I think third. I'm like, I, I just can't do it. It was a risk. I was figured it'd be just the same if I'd sit there and save and not lose track position because track position is pretty key here, so we gambled. I'll tell you what, Jones, you did gamble, but you did pay off. It did pay off for you. Uh, and, I mean, Tarico slapped the wall, but do you think you could have caught him and passed him without it happening? <laughs> I don't know. It was interesting. The tires were just starting to fall off there, and I was starting to finally reel them in a little bit, and 
he had his problem. I don't know. It, uh, it would have been a close race. Interesting. All right, Jones. Well, it's kind of weird. Uh, one DBR car accidentally takes out an Aegis car, and another DBR car finishes second to an Aegis car. So you end up bringing it home for Aegis Motorsports. Anybody else you want to thank before we let you go? Yeah, give a big thanks to Aegis, uh, Dave, Andy, and uh, Jason Cardwell for uh, being my mentor here this week. All right, Jones, we'll let you go here and celebrate your first victory of the year here in Domino's. Thanks. I'll tell you what, Ray, let's run through our finishing order really quickly before we close out tonight's broadcast. Dylan Jones, we just talked to him, ends up getting the victory. Ryan Hill comes home in second. Buzz Moore with an astounding third from the 20th starting spot. Jesse Abraham in fourth, another good run for him. Tanner Talrico, heartbreaker, finishes in the fifth spot. Andrew Payne, we saw him with some troubles getting into the wall a couple times, finishes sixth. Jeremy Crandall, Jason Cardwell are your final drivers on the lead lap. Now you go to 12 laps down, plus David Washington and Brandon Cruz Montsevites comes home in the 10th spot. And I'm glad I let off with that because Ray couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> Works for me, buddy. In the 11th spot, we take the 56 of Josh Bonwell. Still not too shabby of one uh, run, 20 line laps down, unfortunately. 12th spot, William E. Moore in the 58. Gary Sexton will take up the 13th. Uh, 14th place will be the William Davis machine. Shane Parrish in the 81 will take up the 15th place spot. 16th will be Colin Bowden. Nick Reynolds will take up the 17th. 18th spot will be Curtis Young. 19th, William Roberts Jr. And our one and only Robert McFarlane will take up the 20th spot. Rounding out your top 25 all the way to the end. The 24 of Eric Stanford in the 21st place. 22nd, Mitchell Reeves. Jack Watts in the 23rd place. Jeff Martin. And the final top 25 will be Mark Jackson. Well, it's been a long race. It's been a tough race, but it's even a good race here from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And I'm glad I could enjoy it with all of you. From all of us here at Domino's TYJ Top Shelf Cup Series, it's been the Cross Continent Racing 250 Dylan Jones in victory lane. On behalf of Gabriel Woodray, Richard, and Robert McFarlane. Actually, I forget this every time. Robert. Did anybody win a pizza? Yes, sir. I was waiting for you to take a breath. Thank you so much, Gabe. I really, really appreciate you and Ray stepping in here in the broadcast booth. It gives me a chance to watch the race um, and get penalties when needed. It was an awesome race tonight. And, yes, we do have a winner, Tina Cook. Uh, she uh, picked uh, the winner of this race, Dylan C. Jones, and she is from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, she will be getting that large three-topping Domino's Pizza fans. Make sure you tune in next Wednesday night for our next truck race and next Thursday night. Thanks a lot, Gabe. Okay, well, let's close out tonight's broadcast. It's been a good race, like I said, but the Brickyard, it claims its victims. Only eight drivers finishing tonight's race on the lead lap. So it's been a race of attrition, but Dylan Jones walks away with his first victory of the year. As I said, on behalf of all of us here at Domino's and also Michael D'Amico pressing the buttons, getting the picture of UCDU. This has been the Cross Continent 250 live from Indianapolis. Good night. Red, white, and blue is our way of life. Never back down from a challenge or a fight. Nature provides, God gives the rights, we're Americans. Make up America, but it's amazing America.